Good evening, everybody, and welcome here to Tales from the Grim and the Friday Night Fright team as we are going to take on Free League's little jaunt they like to call the Alien RPG. Um, uh, Travis is in the GM's chair tonight. We are all playing some space truckers and one corporate asshole. Just by our cosplay, see if you can guess who's who. <laughs> And right on cue, as the subscription comes in, my friend, everybody, uh, Katie can't be with us tonight. She is not feeling well, so thoughts and prayers out to the fifth member of the Friday Night Fright crew as uh, we get ready to do this and jump in. I'm going to start uh, my guys real easy. He's basically a laborer. His name is Cam. Uh, he works on the docks of a space freighter. Uh, we'll drop down and go around our group and then end with Travis so he can take us into this hell. And it is a hell. It is a brutal system. So let's drop straight down to uh, the man with the tie. Mal, how are you doing, my friend? And uh, who will you be playing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm the captain of this ship. I'll have you know. No, I'm the corporate stooge, obviously. I'm wearing a suit and tie. I'm channeling Paul Reiser, hopefully. Um, I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be back with the Friday Night Fright crew. Hope Katie feels better. Fantastic, my friend. Fantastic. And let's jump over to my best buddy in this in, in life and in this game as we go over to cleric cleric how are you doing are you ready to die who's your best buddy and who will you be playing oh man me and cam we are tight we have been doing this for years together we have seen it all from one system to another the frontier holds no surprises we got this whatever it is hey i'm cat i'm at clark of cord and yeah I'm with my buddy cam we're uh we're the ones that get the work done. That's right. Some people sign checks, and what we do, we break necks. And speaking about breaking necks, let's go over to my buddy, Lindy. Lindy, how are you doing? Are you ready to die uh, again in the aliens that you all play on Friday nights? It's Friday nights, time to die on aliens, whether it's here or over on Laugh Love Lindy's channel. Um, who are you going to be playing, and how are you? I am, I'm stressed, Greg, but it's, it's good. I'm getting a nice, relaxing aliens break. Well, from my, from my packing up of my house. That's why I have booze. Uh, so that's how my day is going. I am really excited to play the pilot, Leah Davis. That's, that's going to be a lot of fun. Last minute change. I was going to be the captain, but that was too much responsibility for my brain right now. So uh, I'm just very excited to be here, very excited to play, and maybe actually play someone who has qualifications for the jobs that they're doing in this Aliens game. Fantastic. And before I hand it over to Travis, I will say that gone but never does she not have our backs katie has donated we all have a story point everybody and if you look straight down it's a great segue to see exactly how you can affect the narrative of this particular game once again let me say this game is brutal uh sit back watch us die and then then maybe help or just watch us die some more but katie has given us a story point and what that means for us mechanically is we get an automatic success on something that we try to do that is huge in this game because what i intend to try to do a lot is running the fuck away so let's go over to travis he's going to be gming us through this hellscape he has uh put in the time put in the hours now it's time to have that payday where he serves us up my friend how are you doing today man i'm awesome i'm thrilled to be back on uh, the channel tales from the grim i'm gonna play some alien i'm on a big nasty alien kick's been going for a while now so uh thrilled to get to run this game and uh for these awesome people and so uh Ready to see if in space anyone can hear you guys scream. Doubtful. Doubtful, I would say, at best. But uh, I'm ready when you are. Uh, Greg, is this, is that, we ready to get it on? My friend, you paint the picture, you set the scene and the frame, and we'll give you the colors. We're here to have some fun, everybody. Sit down, buckle up. When stuff gets dark, just cheer on the sole survivor. <laughs> we'll see you. Space. The year is 2180. Let's all consider for a moment the icy black expanse of deep space. Calm, silent, beautiful, and deadly. 
The low thrum of a ship's FTL engines begins to break the silence in the gray hull of a star freighter slowly glides into view. And then, very touching cross dissolve, you see faces, sweet sleeping faces in cryo tubes on board this ship, nestled each in their own enclosure, sweetest newborn babes. Each crew member is enjoying a peaceful, dreamless sleep, their faces as calm as Hindu cows. You are space truckers on the star freighter US CSS Montero, running what's known as the Gauntlet, which is the trade route between Anchor Point Station and the Frontier. Your ship's cargo hold is packed with dozens of tanks, the rare gas Helium-3. Usually cargo such as these are towed in massive tanker modules that transport much higher concentration of the gas a safe distance from the freight hauler. Montero isn't rated as a commercial towing vehicle. And this small run is a special order for a Whalen yutani corporate account on Sutter's World, a newly established frontier colony. While the trip so far has been totally routine, uh, almost maddeningly so, just the same old thing, the Montero sensors eh, developed a glitch before you left Anchor Point and sporadically pinged contact with a sensor reflection before you activated the displacement drive and went FTL. Your cargo run so far has been without incident, and now you are just awakening from hypersleep, ready to deliver your goods to the colony of Sutter's world. You're all waking up from hypersleep. What are those first initial moments as we as we meet as we meet these characters and they wake up? What do they sound like when they wake up? Cam would sound like the popping of every joint known to every crack of vertebrae as he <laughs> neck pops as he pops his shoulders his is a life of labor and um the most rest he ever gets is inside one of these beds so when he would get up it while well, others might be jumping back into the conscious world he knows what awaits him so he would slowly pull himself up and then look around for his friends First thing you hear, eyes closed, before they've even moved, is, where's the goddamn coffee? Someday, they better figure out how to get the goddamn coffee set up in here. And they wake us up. As literally stumbling, bumping into things, staggering, easily mistaken for somebody who's intoxicated, um, blindly slapping around. <sighs> and making their way down the wall t to wherever the galley is so that they can start the coffee because fuck anything until there's coffee. I think Leah also has that kind of stumbly bit, but Leah doesn't even try walking at this point. She knows it's, it's no good. So instead she kind of just rolls out to the floor and then just crawls over to the lockers. Being in hypersleep, such a drag, you know? It's just, everything feels like it's in slow motion afterwards. And so she's, she goes, she puts on her pair of pants and she feels around in the pocket for a little pill bottle. And she's like, yeah, cool. I'll take some of that with my coffee. And uh, just starts getting ready because she knows someone's on the coffee. So she's getting ready to consume once it's ready. Uh, Wilson also slowly wakes up. He was having a really good dream about getting a promotion and getting off this boat, because the only reason he's here is for uh, the Whaling yutani special run. And uh, he crawls out of cryo, finds his jacket, pulls the cigar out, because he thinks the run's done. He thinks they're good to go, and he first thing he does is light it. So we smash cut to uh, the dinner table. Everybody's breaking bread. It's the first thing you do when you wake up, you're dehydrated. Some of you are feeling seasick, nauseous. It's, uh, it's a while to be asleep, and it's never fun waking up. And so everybody's eating those weird noodles, something resembling cornbread. Uh, it's all pretty gross. 
but you know uh another thing about you mentioned the coffee the coffee's free you know now it's true the automated it doesn't just have coffee waiting for you when you get out of hypersleep that is a bitch but it is free of charge unlike the food which is actually billed to your corporate accounts every time uh you guys enjoy a meal so you know there's very few free rides here on the whalen on a whalen yutani uh, star freighter so everybody's sitting around they're picking at their food they're eating uh why don't we go around really quick one more time and tell us who you're playing and kind of what their role on the ship is and uh just a quick little what's the deal with each one of you uh as cam would you know be using his chopsticks to pull up a noodle and kind of slurp it into his mouth wiping it off his bearded chin uh he would look around cam is a loader operator he takes something heavy from here and he moves it over there and then he does it again and then he does it again and then they go somewhere new and he does that some more and if the loader breaks down he becomes the loader as he takes smaller bits of what needs to go from here to there with his own loaders and carries them around he lifts stuff whether it be with a machine or with the human body that is his job and so he slurps his noodles slowly very nice what about uh what about rye rye is the one who makes sure that cam shit doesn't break down because i mean cam's breaking down we don't want his shit to be breaking down so rye's job is to make sure this stuff works whether it's on the ship whether it's outside of the ship does it have electric running through it or is it nuts and bolts her job is to make sure that shit works very nice and uh what about mr wilson uh well mr wilson is here direct from wayland yutani he is here to make sure the company's interests are always at the top of everyone's thoughts like you sta like you stated nothing's a free ride on this ship uh he, his only friend that i'm aware of is the captain Very nice. And speaking of the captain, yes, there's a there is a, a crew member sitting there, uh, a woman named Vanessa Miller, who uh, is looking a little worse for wear coming out of the tubes. Of all of you, she doesn't look great. She clear she's uh, coughing and spitting and sneezing into a into a napkin, and got the real red bloodshot kind of uh, weepy eyes, and it just seems kind of out of it. Is picking at her food and and doesn't look looking looking a little peaked, but. Uh, you're not making too much conversation. Yeah. And Leah's job on the ship, she's got her hair kind of pulled back into a bow. And she has two jobs, actually. One, feed the ship's cat, because the ship's cat's very important for morale. And the other one is to pilot the ship. So, you know, two very crucial and important jobs. She's just chugging coffee. All right. Love that we have a, uh, a ship cat. Go ahead. Every time that the captain sneezes or the the hacking cough, Rye just picks up a napkin, throws it over to them, and moves just a little bit further away. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. It's so awful. It's so awful. Yeah. You know we got a med bay for that, right? Yeah. At the ta ta come on. No, everybody needs to eat, and then we need to get to the bridge, and then you and Cham got to get down and. <coughs> do all the diagnostics. How am I supposed to eat watching that? Ugh. Mm. Picks a cup of coffee and gets you a got little, little, you know? little schmutz on your face. No, you guys don't like it? That's fine. I'll eat right over here. It's fine. Yeah. I don't want to contaminate anybody. <laughs> she kind of scooches her butt further down the... Hold on. Uh, all right. All right. There you all right. Go. She's, not, she's not having it. She's not having it. She's cranky. She's tired. And these are the last few minutes before you guys are going to start first shift and uh, really get to work. You guys know that the the engineering crew has to get uh, below deck and uh, start to run a diagnostic on all the helium three, make sure everything where it's, is where it's supposed to be. Um, there's some early checks to as you get closer to where you're going to move the helium three from one side of the bay to the other 
to get ready to load it onto Daisy, the uh, shuttle, because the shuttle is actually how you'll be moving the Helium-3 off of the Montero and to deliver it and get paid, guys. So everybody's anxious to get the Helium-3 out of its storage containers where it is right now and into Daisy as it's going. So uh, the captain kind of coughs that, reminds you of what you should be, what you know you're going to do anyway. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Travis, I have a question real quick. Helium-3, yes. is it, does it explode? Yes. Yes, let's talk about Helium-3. Let's, I'd like to start a quick educational film. Uh, <laughs> Helium-3 and you. Um, let's see, hold on. The Montero's uh, cargo bay is currently full of 72 high-pressure tanks carrying 200,000 tons of the highly flammable helium-3 uh, gas. Each tank is half the size of a tanker trailer. It's big. Uh, helium-3 is an amazingly clean energy source used throughout the colonies. Its volatile nature means that it can be very dangerous to transport. To ferry the cargo to and from orbit, the Montero is equipped with an ailing WY-37B cargo shuttle called DAISY. At about 80 years old, DAISY has seen better days, but you know what? She'll fly true, and she'll drop off the goods. And so, uh, yes, hopefully that answers your question. And first shift is to start moving things on to Daisy. Great. So, uh, Chan would yeah. get up and look over at Rye. Uh, so do you want to go down and move the bombs, or...? Um... Yeah, let's do it. it. You got rid of his lighter, right? Because I swear, if he lights up again down there, I am going to bust his face, then the cigar. I don't think you're going to have to. If we have a, a breach, it'll be quick. <sighs> you know, they ain't paying us to eat. Let's go do it. Yep, so the, uh, I guess the, 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 the the hands, the laborers would get up and head down to get things done. And just as they t stand up and start moving uh, the, the PA pings and it's just the sort of general uh, notification bell that uh, it's time to head to the head to the bridge and right, that there's right. a ping, there's a ping on the uh, navigation computer and the sensors. I guess I'll go look at that, because I'm a pilot. I'm supposed to know what we're navigating. Sort of as you stand up and start to move, you see Captain Miller rally and, uh, you know, dump her stuff and pour one more cup of coffee and, and lurch. Oh, yeah, I definitely take a cup of coffee. There you go. Very nice. Uh, so, yeah, you guys head down. Um, and for the engineers, uh, we're gonna do a shift of work. We're gonna start a shift of work real quick. So let's make a couple of rolls. Um, let's end this game quick. <laughs> and we're gonna, <laughs> I'm sure you're not going to explode like right away. Uh, That's mother. I'm you sure it's gonna that. be okay. Uh, so it's a heavy machinery roll. And one of you, it's going to be one roll because I assume you're helping each other. Kind of how you load Daisy up is one person goes in the loader and the other person is working the terminals and, and sort of assisting that person. So who has the higher heavy machinery? How do you guys want to handle the first five hours of uh, moving the stuff around? Um, I think... Jam has a, I have a three in heavy yeah. machinery. Yeah, I've only, Rise only got a one. So she'd be running the ter, uh, the terminals and monitoring everything. All right, so Rye gives Cham a plus one to his base dice. Uh, and so let's roll, let's make a heavy machinery roll. So I'm pushing it. Let's do it. Don't explode, okay? But right, right, but he wants to do this right now. If I get more, I don't have any successes on that roll. 
If I were to re-roll and get more successes, though, we could get you this can, work done faster, correct? Correct. You could push your roll and take a stress and re-roll all the dice that did not succeed, which in this case is all of them. Let's do it. I'm taking that stress. Do it. So roll it, and then you're going to roll the stress die. Boom. So you got one success and nothing on your stress die. All right. So, it, you know, we're going to have to talk about how this manifests because there's there's something in the way. Things shifted during the, the FTL, uh, you know, flight. Uh, there, was, there was somebody left something unbuckled. It rolled across. You had to move it with the loader. And it's and it's pissing you off. Tell me a little bit about how he gets it done, but not without uh, you know getting stressed out. How does that how does that manifest? This is this is uh, he would immediately attribute this to corporate. He would go down, and as he's using the loader to kind of go in and get a hold of a skiff from the bottom of these uh, tanks, he would realize that there is you know um, a clipboard in the way, and he'd have to unbuckle get out go down grab it and by that time he's off a bit he catches you know he's three quarters up so it's a slant he has to move slower everything is a slog he's come out of sleeping you know perhaps it's his own addled brain a bit but everything seems to take an extra step and that's what's causing this just you know this quicksand walk as he you know, takes twice as long to make it back to Rye as he comes back and he looks and just shakes his head each time as he lowers down another tank of helium three and then he shakes his head as he walks back by her. Kim, what the hell, man? I, I, don't, I don't know. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, question uh, in game does the because I assisted do I also take that point of stress because it's a group thing mm, or is I, that considered a group uh, you know that's a great question I think you do I think you do actually does she does she take the stress or does she suffer um, from if I would roll one I think she takes the I think Oh, you might be right about that. Uh, somebody's gonna have to double check me on. I will. I will. I'll, we'll, we'll do it behind the screens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a page on help on helping each other, helping others. Uh, you have to see the helping brace issue. Helping on page thirty-seven. Anyway, so take a look. That's a good question. Uh, but you definitely can tell that you know, Cam is is pissed, and uh, you know. Maybe like he always does, kind of taking on the whole thing himself rather than letting people help him out. And uh, this is just kind of the rhythm of getting back to work after being asleep from so long. So, so they start to get themselves together and move things around down below decks. Meanwhile, on the, in the still corridor leading to the bridge, monitors begin to flicker to life the light from the monitor reflected on various panels, cords and tubes and plates and bulbous surfaces sitting there sort of staring at you. And uh, it's time for the pilot to start making checks. Uh, give me uh, a, let's little check here that I'm making you roll the right thing. I believe it's just straight up piloting. Piloting? Sure. You're Davis, let's see here. Yeah. So piloting and, uh, you know, this is a routine thing. Still going to make you roll it, but you get a plus two Ooh, modification to this roll. I'm a damn good pilot. How about four successes? Oh, boom. So you're throwing switches, you're hitting buttons. You got those ones above your head. Clack, 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 clack. Those are the good ones. Snap, snap. It's great. And uh, you're getting a ping. You're getting a sensor ping uh, like there is another ship uh, within close range of the Montero. I make sure it's not just a smudge on the screen. Like that. Oh, okay. I'd have followed her into the into the bridge as well, still mm -hmm. with the cigar lit. Yep, over, over uh, the shoulder, over her shoulder, you can see uh, this ping. Uh, Davis, what's that? 
Uh, that, sir, is a ping. But what does it mean? Uh, it means that, uh, well, I double checked, it's not a smudge. Uh, it means that there's, you know, something in the proximity sensors. Uh, let me see if I can get visual on it. Uh, and I'll try to, you know, turn the ship towards it. So it's, it's time to just run a sensor diagnosis. Okay. Give me another contact roll, and this is at a contact no, roll. Uh, yes, I need a contact roll. And uh, what is Wilson's contact score while we're all standing here? And I will check the captain's too. Who is mine? Is off. zero. Wilson's got a one. So Wilson, uh, you can help out. You know, uh, being the company man, you're familiar with, uh, you know, all the terminals and uh, various overrides, and you can, you can get in there and give, uh, give the pilot the plus one to run a thorough sensor scan. Sure, I'll give her the plus one. So what you uh, determine and what comes back is uh, an error report from uh, from Mother saying that there was a sensor uh, malfunction. Huh. It looks like uh, it was just a sensor malfunction there, uh, Wilson. And as you say that, both of you and the captain notice that uh, there's nothing in the ongoing log on one of the terminals sort of the idle uh, log that shows communication between you and Sutter's, uh, Sutter's World and um, the colonial beacon that relays all of this communication between you and where you're going. And there is no communication um, records between the Montero and corporate or Sutter's home or the colonies since you guys uh, went FTL. And so um this isn't normal and uh huh. weird seems we got a couple of things malfunctioning right now of course it's right after we get out all right all right sure let me just look at that and i'll see i'll try sending like a ping out like just you know to like you know montero to whatever I love it. Uh, Wilson, you want to help her with another contact roll? You guys are looking at this? Sure. Uh, another one. Oh, that's one success. Very nice. So Sutter's world does not seem to have responded to any of the auto hails made, these sort of check-in pings that the system makes while you're asleep. Mm-hmm. And there's no return ping from the beacon tower since you guys have woken up. And that's because the Montero is nowhere near the colony and is instead in deep space. Your navigation star charts are off. Uh, and the success here, you guys are just sort of like realizing now that you're not you're nowhere near uh, Sutter's world. And instead, you're in deep space between stars. Well, fudgesicles. Over that it. can't be right. Those star charts aren't. That's the wrong. We're, we're we're not in the right place. No, we're not. That's that's why I said fudge sickles. So a little uh, light begins to ping in the corner. You hear a special uh, chime that you know is mother uh, wanting to talk to the captain. Great. All right, Captain. Ma wants to talk to you. So the captain uh, makes eye contact with Wilson and uh, takes another sip of coffee and sort of saunters out of the room. Not happy about it. And as she's in there, she's gone for a good 15 or 20 minutes. Hmm. I, try to make, I make really awkward small talk with Wilson the whole time. Oh, uh, you know what? What kind of what do you do on like a Friday night? 
what's we don't get really get Fridays out here. Well, I mean, you know, when you're, you're not working, I'm sure you don't work all the time, do you? Uh, you know, drinks, smokes with the guys, the ladies, whatever. Mm. Mm. Any any special guy or lady in your life? Nope. Oh. No, no time for that with a uh, corporation wanting what they want. Oh, well, you know, I think you just gotta make the time, you know? Maybe you just haven't met the right person yet. That's just, it's just awkward, the whole. 20 minutes that it takes. So at last, uh, the captain makes her way back to the bridge. And she throws the switch on the wall that opens the PA and opens the comms to the entire ship. And she clears her throat. <coughs> Attention, uh, Montero. Um, so uh, we've got a little, uh, we've got good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is we didn't explode. The bad news is uh, we're way off course, and um, it's because Mother picked up a distress call from an unknown ship, and it looks like we need to investigate. Uh, and we have a transmission. Uh, can we go ahead and, uh, Davis, can you go ahead and pull up? Let me go ahead and she kind of like punches in a terminal and sort of nods at you and now you see a whole sort of section of comms appear that wasn't there 30 seconds ago you know this is sort of a a, a clearance has been released to the ship and for you to uh, play a certain file that you now see on the thing um, so the captain kind of looks at you and, and nods Go ahead and play that. All right. Oh, uh, that didn't sound good. Well, what could... the hell? I mean, it could be anything, you know, it could be, it could be. No, no, it can't be anything. It's probably something bad. It could be a malfunctioning transmitter. The company wants us to look into this ship and if you'll all look at your contracts, just to go ahead and head this one off right now. If you'll all, get, all look at your contracts, you all signed that uh, we have to investigate any unknown transmission or distress signals, particularly from company property. Uh, at the risk of total forfeiture of your shares. Right. Well, let's go investigate this. I'm going to just top off my coffee real quick. Is this overtime? No. Of course not. And the captain looks over at Wilson and, you know, kind of makes wary eye contact and is like, anybody else got any questions, thoughts, concerns? Down in the uh, cargo bay, Cam would look at all of the helium-3 tanks that he's been moving, realizing they're going to need to be moved back out of Daisy because you can't transport or go FTL with them in an exterior shuttle pod. And if the loader that he has around him could slump and slouch, it would as he... Oof. You know, I swear sometimes they do this just so they can bill us for more food. And just as you kind of half hear that over the PAs, a uh, little uh, aside, uh, and the company man sort of that, that reaches your ears, uh, let me get a uh, the equivalent of perception checks from um, Davis and Wilson. That would so be observation. A, observation roll from both of you. Ooh. Two successes. Very nice. So, uh, Davis, as everybody's kind of talking, discussing this and 
tension in the room starts to build just a little bit. The notion of having to go out of your way to investigate this transmission. You look out of the glass, out of the bridge, and you can see something. It's just a dot, but it jumps out to you, having looked out mm -hmm. of a million uh, bridges. You know, uh, you know, it, it, it's slowly moving towards the Montero and you can just see it. Is that the direction that the distress signal is coming from? Uh, you don't know for sure which direction in any, you would, I would need a contact role for that specific okay. information. Well, while I'm looking that up, I'm just going to kind of keep an eye on it and nose off and gently head in that direction because I want thrusters on in case it's something uh, like an asteroid or something that's just hurtling through space and I don't want it to hit us so that way I can get us out of the way if necessary but I'm curious to see what it is keep an eye on it thrusters on uh content kapow no idea I just I fly from point A to point B I don't fly to point A point five <laughs> looking at it you run a scan on it mm -hmm. uh it's it's a brick you don't know what it is and and everybody you can kind of see davis something's got her attention she's hitting buttons and uh she's looking at something out in the distance and just as maybe one of you takes a breath to ask her what's going on uh red lights flash and a klaxon siren on the bridge erupts to life Whoop! and the sensors immediately jump that there is a object that one on a collision course with the Montero I, I just nudge us out of the way because I had thrusters turned on already beautiful I need a piloting check sure and I will since you were out in front of it no modif no, there will be no modifications okay. to the roll but you still have to get out of the way. Very nice. With two successes, you get to do a stunt. Ooh. This is a little little uh, mechanic that's a lot of fun. Uh, if you get more than one success, there's a little list on every one of the skills in the quick start guide. Oh, snap. Doing a stunt. I would say that unless you have a really cool idea, uh, you just get out of the way in very stylish fashion. How do you, how do you maneuver around this for an object that you can tell as it gets too close is a uh is a large company mm. starship okay uh well i think a barrel roll could be cool and to do a barrel roll I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the piloting stunts um for every extra blinky roll i can i can gain a plus one modification to a later skill roll really this one or i show off definitely show off we just like lazily almost just roll out of the way just i want to time the roll so that way i can see maybe into the cockpit as it's hurtling past us i love it yeah i love it and uh sensors are as it gets uncomfortably close to the ship the sensors go ahead and read this as uh as the ship that indeed made the transmission and it's picking it up as it moves beside your ship. It's the USCSS Cronus, a Wayland SEV M3 Heliades class, class spacecraft. Yeah. And uh, the only sign of life uh, is a repeating, very faint SOS signal from its fading transponder that you only picked up as it moved dangerously close to the Montero. Mm -hmm. Oh, Captain, I found the ship you're looking for. <laughs> it was right there. As I like, you know, let this back out. See it? So why don't you make me a contact roll to run sensors on the Cronus really quick. Sure. Oh, I got a success. 
Very nice. Her engines are dead, and inertia is carrying it along uh, at the last achieved speed, which is 0. 0.04 light speed. Mm. So, uh, and with no information being broadcast out, with no running or interior lights, um, uh, you're going to have to catch up to it, match its speed, and as the captain points out, attempt to board it. All right. No problem. I'll turn the ship around. Start heading after it. Nice. Uh, the captain throws the switch on the PA one more time and says, uh, can I go ahead and get all hands up to the bridge, please? You want us to leave these tanks unsecured down here? Why don't you go ahead and finish the one you're working on and then come on up because we're taking I'm, we're going full stop on all preloading of daisy uh we're gonna talk about how we're gonna walk across and uh investigate what's going on on the cronus we this is what we're doing right now people i mean everybody needs to pencils down it's time to start figuring out how to get over there right she deliberately right deliberately turns the cam uh the pa uh calm off and looks over at Cam and goes, yeah, how many of those are left? Too many each way. I mean, it's too many from where they were to where they're going and from where they've been to where they're going to go back. We're at the point of no return in each direction. In each direction. Right. Uh, she'll turn the comm back on and go, uh, yeah, Cap, that's going to be a bit before we can get up there because gee we'd already gotten half of these fuckers loaded onto daisy now we got to get them off of daisy if you want to use daisy yeah it will, will be a bit bye and the calm goes off what, what hey what did she just hang up on me i think she, she did. did like throw um, the switch Go Cam, ahead. Will, Cam will walk by and with the huge arm of the loader, he'll raise it up and just hold it for a high five as he walks by. And Rye's actually going to leave the um, leave the terminal station. Cam's got this. Rye's going to start getting one of the smaller loaders um, and start helping out moving these things, you know, as much as possible. Okay. Let's try to at least speed up the job a little bit so the captain doesn't have a complete hissy. Okay. So uh, the captain doesn't quite argue with you because there are a couple of ways to uh, approach the Cronus. You can get up close to it, match speed, and extend the umbilicus across to its airlock. You can also take Daisy over there and attempt to land it in uh, their airlock. Uh, and so it's not necessarily a bad thing to remove the highly explosive material off of the shuttle. So uh, Captain doesn't pick the phone back up and, and talk you out of it. So it took you about an hour, hour and a half to set it up. It's going to take you about as much to break it out. And uh, while that's happening, the captain throws up in the wastebasket. Oh, you all right there? I just, it's this it's this hibernation sickness. I get it. I get it. It's the, it's the... Get it from here, yeah, Captain. You want some? You, you should get some from the med bay to help out with that. You know. If if they really are gonna unload the whole thing, and I'm gonna unload the whole I'm thing. not gonna. I don't have the energy to talk them out of it. I'm just gonna walk over to the med bay. I'm just, I'll just be back. Yeah, you wanna just... get get me some too? I've been I've been keeping it down, you know, but uh, I wouldn't. You know, my. I have a bit some of what? a. So, you know, I've got a bit of a migraine. You know, I get the the, high, the, the hibernation migraines. All right, all right. I've, she's halfway down the hall. I'll bring you some Thanks. Tylenol. Thanks, I'll bring you some Tylenol. I, uh, I guess that will work. Okay. Wilson's gonna follow the captain. I'm surprised. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Davis, as you put your feet up and attempt to kill a, a little time, uh huh. The Cronus, the, you know. Have you have you attempted to match speed with the with the Cronus? Oh yeah. All right, all right. So you know you're you're right up with it. 
you know? Mm -hmm. And you got these floodlights on. Yeah, I'm playing I Spy. And I'm like, I Spy Akuma. I'm looking in the window. It takes about 20 minutes for the network uh, bounce signal to come back with the automated research check on the call letters of the of the Cronus. Just the ship automatically requests more information yeah. on the ship that it almost got hit by. And you know, you are We had at least perhaps two we're fine. Yeah, right. You're not too close to it. You are perhaps surprised to find out that the Cronus launched in twenty one ten. And it's been missing for three quarters of a century. <laughs> Everyone's either still asleep or everybody's probably dead. That's that's gonna be fun to look at. Diagnostics show uh, below freezing temperatures Ooh. on the Cronus. Chilly. All right. And you're not able to get any read on breathable air mm. or pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, slowly, you see over on the side terminal out of the corner of your eye. Uh, priorities start to roll in in another transmission from the company that is not only permitted for mother and the captain to see. Mm. It says, number one, recover scientific data data and samples from the US CSS Cronus. Two, es escort the salvaged Cronus to Anchorhead or another Whalen yutani facility. Number three, save any remaining crew members on the Cronus. Slightly less boring. That's it. Just three. I looked to see if Captain left her terminal on while she was puking in the wastebasket. Uh, you can you can hit the speakers in the med bay. Yeah. Now let's go there now. So the captain went straight to the med bay, threw up again, and is now raiding the cabinet for, uh, you know, Dramamine. And is just sort of going shopping in the uh, in the pills, uh, there, Wilson. You know they're going to bill you for that. It's fine. I feel awful. I've never felt this awful in my life. I just feel, I just so out of it. And we now we got to go walk around this whole thing. And I just, I just not up to it. I gotta, I gotta take something. <coughs> Did Mother tell you anything else that might be pertinent? Well, you would know, wouldn't you? <coughs> I can go read for myself if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, you could, couldn't you? <sighs> oh. Oh, you can just go read it. You want to read it? Go read it. It'd be deal. easier if you just tell me. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. Look, she just wants us to walk over there. Ships were missing for 70 years. They want us to walk over there. They want us to save anybody else on it. Uh, it's a science vessel. A uh, bunch of science shit on there. They want it back. So now we got to walk over there, get in our little suits, freeze our ass off. Look, if I keep throwing up like this, I can't wear one of those suits. That's There's true. But There's if we, laws. If you do a good enough job, I'll try and argue for bonuses for you and the crew. <sighs> oh, really? I'm not saying it'll succeed, but I'll try. This is what I'm telling you. I'm going to put on a little suit. We're going to walk over there. We're going to turn it on. And then I am going to take a nap while we tow it back to anchor point. Okay? One yep. walk, one nap. Period. What kind of a bonus? I, this is, Maybe the nap comes later. What are we talking? Hold on. Hold on a second. Oh. He launches into like a speech with a bunch of corporate bullshit lingo in it. And it, it roughly equates to like a few percentage bonus on top of the pay. Like it's really not that big a deal, probably. And you get about halfway through it. 
before she gives you a thumbs up and runs into the bathroom, slams the door. Now, at that moment, the PA clicks on. And uh, Davis uh, was was going to talk to the med bay, apparently. That was just one of the eavesdrop, really. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you heard all that then. Okay, beautiful. Um... (laughs) All right, so uh, and, and, like hearing the cat run off, and I'll be like, like, uh, Captain. Apparently, this ship's been lost for like seventy years or so. Crazy, right? It's got the scans in. Wilson, you're standing there, and and the captain can't hear it because she's, and if she can, she's in the bathroom. So it's just you listening to Davis over the PA. He just hits the button. Amazing. Anything else? Uh, you know, uh, it's got a bunch of science stuff on it, apparently. Oh, we're supposed to get samples? We got and at that in. at that moment, Davis, maps of the Cronus uh, specs oh, of all four decks begin to roll in. I'm going to download these. You want to you wanna come look over these maps with me, Wilson? Sounds like the captain's busy chucking her guts up. Sure, I was on my way back up anyway. All right, so uh, about 45 minutes or an hour goes by. Uh, below decks, they start to wrap up. You guys get everything off of Daisy. Do you prep Daisy? What what, uh, what else do you do as you, as you wrap up down there? We'd probably do pre-flight for Daisy just to make sure that, you know, everything's ready uh, for her to take this jaunt just so we can get it done quickly. Um, there is an irritation, but the irritation doesn't hinder the execution of the job because you can be pissed all you want. You still have to be pissed and get it done as easily as possible because they're going to make you just do it while you're dragging your feet or while you're hopping too. So you might as well hop too. Dude, you, I was literally thinking the exact same thing. EVA suits are being checked. Every, everything is going over. Everything worked. You guys are also aware of uh, the various, the, the gear. And closer to all the gear on the Montero as far as uh, weaponry and uh, the sort of materials you're going to need to take over to investigate the Cronus. So um as you guys wrap up you hear the captain over the pa uh say uh hey uh uh champ right uh, i'm gonna need you guys to go ahead and uh uh open up the lockers make sure we have everything go ahead and bring up uh one of everything uh, and we'll meet on the bridge and what she means is there are there is a motion tracker on the Montero, there is a cutting torch, there is one bolt gun, there is one service pistol, there is one harpoon grappling gun, and in center an M two four zero incinerator unit. Oh yes, uh, and uh, all of them are sitting pretty in their lockers, uh, and. Uh, yeah. She, the captain asked you to bring one of everything on up to the uh, to the bridge. As soon as the comm would go off, he'd look over, right? That's a lot of shit. You know, that's a, that's a ton of shit to take up to the bridge. You know that, right? Yeah, and I mean, why not put it on Daisy? I mean, if they're going, why bring it to the bridge? I don't know. I, I, I mean, every just load time me up. she goes to hypersleep, I swear something dies up in those big brain cells of hers. All right. Um, just for occasions like this, uh, 
I would suspect that the pair of them have rigged up some type of harness that has, you put it over your shoulders and it has like a, a joint fork coming out from around the waist so they can load up equipment and be able to walk it through the tight corridors of, it's a self-loader that they actually have uh, for furniture moving, but I'm sure it'd be something very similar to what they would have uh, on the Montero just to be able to move things throughout the ship. So he shrug out of the, the, the auto loader and into this more manual unit and just be like, load me up, load me up. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and as, as we're loading up, there's only one of everything or are we just supposed to bring one of everything? Captain is unwell and has a reputation for asking you to do things twice and asking you to go further than you should logistically go simply to amuse her own, uh, you know, uh, insecurity. And so uh, you can feel free to get over the comm and tell the captain that uh, you're not hauling all that shit all the way up to the, to the bridge that you guys are talking about this because, yeah, it is, it's a ton of junk. And uh, she also, you know that she's never uh, done like, you guys, as a crew, you guys have never had to do like a one of these before. You've never been in this situation. It's been yeah. the same old thing over and over and over again. And now you, it's time to start thinking like a SWAT team and the captain sucks at it is sort of what's rolling around in your brain. Yeah. Let, let's try this. Let's try this. Uh, uh, Champ's going to go over and kind of get, like take the mic from, Rise headset to talk into it. Uh, yeah, Captain, Captain, we got everything loaded in the Daisy, like you said. One of everything's in Daisy. Oh, 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 that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, well done. All right. So uh, just head up to the bridge. We're gonna go ahead and do a uh, a uh, pre walk uh, meeting, right? That's what you do, right? I've never. Am I supposed to be hearing like telephones ringing right now? I have never uh, had a headache like that. No, did you get that Tylenol, Captain? Yeah, I, I took. I took one of. I took one of everything. I just like. I feel like dizzy. You took one of everything. Did you bring me one of everything? No. I told you I had like. I had You're the, flying the ship. Yeah, I got. I told you I had the headache. It's. Did you bring me my Tylenol? Bring you Tylenol. She hands you two Tylenol. So after, after they do that, Rai looks at Cam, and I'm I'm assuming there's more than one of everything in the in the locker. There's like maybe an extra bolt gun, maybe an extra flamer or something laying around. There is. Yeah, uh, Rai is going to look at Cam and just kind of stash those. All right, so let's be clear. There is no, uh, there is one of everything. Okay. You've got one, and this is why, this is sort of this moment, and you guys are thinking about this because it's time to, you know, gear up. And uh, so it's, it's a matter of who's gonna take what, and ultimately it's all up to the captain, but you know that she's not gonna nickel and dime anybody over who gets the bolt gun versus who gets the... Yeah. I just think of Ryan looks at the whole gun, looks at Cam because she'll kill herself with one of these. We'll keep that. Uh, Wilson will burn everybody with one of these. We'll keep that. I think it's going to be like the the harmless little stuff like the service pistol, maybe uh, maybe a cutting torch. Things they can't do a whole lot of damage to themselves or each other with. Yeah, uh, 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 it, Cam would take the the motion tracker and just you know grab it and like turn it on for a second. Yeah, it's working. It's working. All right. Very nice. So. Uh, you guys are all loaded up down there, and uh, I want to look at the map of the Montero really quick, if we can pull that up really quick, because I want to Yeah, see... I've been studying it while waiting for these guys to get the stuff. Uh, because... Here it is. Because I want to go ahead and double check that the bridge... 
so how are you guys um does anybody have any before the captain uh you know stands up and attempts to make a judgment you know davis you sort of it's it's kind of up to you to talk about like how you want to actually get on to the get on to the cronus what uh so the captain sort of like looks at you and goes what do we do do you, you want to do the umbilicus or do you feel like flying daisy on in there i i mean i do you want me to go on the ship too i mean don't you want to have someone at the controls here I mean, if you want me to, to get at that spacesuit, I mean, I will. Uh, no, we've all got to go. We've all got to go. I'd rather go. think I'm on Billicus, and that way we're at least connected to, you know, the ship. All right. But uh, I'll do Daisy if that's what everybody else wants to well, do. Let's go ahead and just Maybe. do the, let's just go and do the Umbilicus. That's a, that's a good idea. Go ahead and buddy up, and let's do the Umbilicus, and we'll just walk right over. Yeah. I can do that. All right, so give me a piloting check. Yeah. And then it's time to suit up. And uh, as, yes, did we get it? Wonderful, oh my gosh. So you buddy up, you get the, uh, you know, you lock in the umbilicus and it slowly moves across about 10 meters long. It connects with the Cronus, does the locks on its end and you all start to gather up uh, in the loading bay uh, mm -hmm. to walk over. Everybody gets into their suits and the captain is just like sort of looking at all this gear and it's like, like, you know, I got that flop sweat and it's kind of gray, you know? And, and she's just like, all right, who wants the flamethrower? Where, are we taking a flamethrower over there? I mean, it's really I, I, cold. I packed you extra barf bags, Captain. I'm telling you, here's here's the here's the here's the mission. We're gonna walk straight across. We're gonna go right to the bridge, and we're gonna get everything turned back on. It's cold over there, and uh, this is gonna you know we don't know we don't know what we're up against. We just need to turn it on and tow it home. All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, the door opens, this long path goes across, and you guys walk to the other end, and the door is locked, of course, so who has the highest com tech to uh, run a bypass and unlock the door? I fly ships, I don't unlock doors. Mine's, Ryan's got a three on com tech. Uh, Cam will help out if that will, will aid in that. Do it. And that gives you a plus one. All right. Well, I'm pushing that. Push it. Nice. Take that stress. That stress. Do Go I still for get it. The plus one? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I get the panic if you get it, but nice. All right, it's fighting you. This is yeah. an older ship. It's a. It's something to note too that it's a. It's a sophisticated ship for its time. Um, uh, it looks like the Prome you've seen pictures of like the Prometheus class ships that were these beautiful, amazing science vessel uh, premier ships for the Whaling Tiny Cor Corporation uh, right after the. Turn of, the, turn of the century and so you recognize it as a very advanced ship for its time but it's it's been floating for so long that you it, it took a lot to get the door open yeah. and punching the pads ah, smacks it real hard <laughs> smacks it again from the other angle then it works all right so let's talk about air you guys each have uh five in your air tanks, uh, and we will be rolling every round to uh, check your air. The round is uh, five to 10 minutes out of turn, 
And so uh, roughly every five to 10 minutes, uh, I'm gonna have you guys make a roll for your air, which starts at five. So, you know, and again, it's uh, as this door slowly opens, you see this lonely, silent, ice cold science vessel and the long hallway extends in front of you. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the chronos here. How does everybody, let's kind of sound off on like, uh, as we pull up, Greg, can you pull up the chronos maps one more time in roll 20? Cause this is all gotten weird. On Absolutely. I can take us, I can take us to a specific deck if you want us to go to a specific deck right and everybody should have them in their handouts well let's uh, yeah let's look at it because everybody kind of jump in here because we're going to be crawling all over the cronus from here out and i believe you guys enter on deck a no you enter on deck Can everybody see? Uh, it's on 122, 123. And so for the viewers at home who uh, who are maybe just seeing this for the first time, like the Cronus is, you know, again, a, it's four decks. Uh, and it is a very expensive, very nice research company research vessel. And, and you want probably, us on deck A? Is that what you said, Travis? I'm sorry to interrupt. I think so. I think so. As I'm as I'm describing the ship a little bit and setting the tone a little bit, we all need to look and see where you guys actually enter. I think you enter the vehicle bay. Um. Oh no! Here you go. You enter on deck C, at the very, at the very top, in this little room right here above junction C1. So let's pull up deck C and we're gonna add our heroes here. Uh, could you ping it out for me where you want us to drop in and I'll put everybody in position there, right there. Okay. Oh, hold on. Did I ping? I didn't ping. I'm assuming based on what you said, it's right here. Yeah. Just North of C one on deck C. We're all there. Junction C, uh, Junction One begins at this main airlock, and the internal doors. After you guys breach that locked door, the internal doors inside the airlock work just fine. And in front of you uh, is an external elevator uh, attached to the airlock, and its purpose is to lower a crew to the surface of a planet if they chose not to use the vehicle bay, and it's out of order see an alien and you see uh why don't everybody give me a uh observation roll as you walk into this airlock chamber on the cronus at junction shit c1 okay uh travis i had a success and i got a stress but uh i only have one stress so so yeah, so a little house rule for those of you uh, Kiwi score at home. So he has one stress. So rather than make him roll panic, uh, you you add you take another stress, and you did not succeed on that roll. And so let's let's talk a little bit about atmosphere here, folks. Let's just try and let's just try and drink this one in because you have walked onto something that should not be, and something foreign to every one of you you know wilson for you this should this this doesn't this isn't correct you don't see company property worth this much floating in space after 70 years you know for the crew of the montero for you space truckers 
not only is this outside of your job description, not only were you not supposed to be here today, not only were you supposed to be home by now, but you're now spelunking through this, you know, ghost ship. And so for, uh, for Cham, Cam, Cham, that's starting to sink in, you know? Uh, and you take a stress from it, you know, you're the, the, sh the, the bubble on your compression suit starting to fog up a little bit. You know what I mean? He's sweats beating on your forehead and the claustrophobia of all of it is starting to sink in for each one of you as you sort of shuffle your feet and take a look around, uh, this, this room, um, why can't I see the map? Boys and girls. Uh, go up to the top, since you're the GM, you have to select to go to the map yourself. So go to the drop down at the top with the little blue mm -hmm. page map toolbar. Oh, okay. And uh -huh. then go, there, go down to the deck C and you'll see us all sitting there. <laughs> yes. And, uh, uh, Travis, can I ask you, is it dark in here? It is very dark. The, there and, is no power on the Cronus. So, uh, our personal cams will be reading in night vision then. Oh yeah. Let's go. Let's go now to night vision because having stepped onto the Cronus, there's sort of like lights down the hall, you know, you can kind of picture it in your head that you're, you're still like this 10 foot umbilicus and the, and the airlock door is still open behind you. So there's light coming into this room, but as the internal door at, uh, Looking into this hallway here at Junction C1 opens, you see that it is pitch dark uh, inside, and you see uh, condensation begin to form on the walls, indicating that it is very cold um, inside the Cronus. So uh, you're standing here at this sort of uh, T junction. There's halls to your left and right. There's a hall going straight that leads to uh, a junction with a closed door in front of you. And then those halls go off. So what happens in this moment as you guys start to collect yourselves here uh, in the icy darkness? Jam shitting himself just a little bit. Like it's touching cloth. It's not that bad yet but he's just not feeling all of this in this cold. He's a, he's a space trucker, he's not a Marine. You know, he's not, you know, breach and clear. No, 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 he comes in afterwards and picks up the scrap that was left behind for salvage. Um, so his eyes beneath the, the helmet, as the puffs of breath would kind of steam the lower part, would be going just from straight ahead Back to Rye, straight ahead, back to Rye, just looking for touchstones. Rye, she's kind of uh, looking around, uh, just kind of taps something, like right here over her heart, where stuck in her suit, underneath everything is uh, a, where she keeps a picture of her brother. She goes off ship, he goes with her. Um, she catches Cam's eye. She's going to reach up, she's going to grab his helmet. She's going to put it to her We good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Stay with me. Thanks. Whatever whatever these two do, whatever the rest of them do, you and me, right? Always, always. We got this. Very nice. All right. So... You know, this is where you guys start to tell me what you're going to do. The captain mumbles something under her breath that we got to get to the, we got to get to the bridge. You know, she she wants to get to the bridge. She wants to get to mother, but she's got one hand on the wall and uh, she's unsteady on her feet. All right. Um, I was able to look at the maps of the Cronus, I think a little bit longer than everyone else too was able to. Um, so I'm going to just start heading, I believe, in the most direct route towards the bridge. Because, I mean, you know, I don't 
the last time a captain puked in a space suit. I was the one who had to clean it up, which is not great. So, I get in, get out before the captain does that. That'd be great. Um, so, would that be one of the elevators? We're going to start heading towards the elevators. Junction C2 in front of you. Uh, uh, has like up down arrows stenciled on the uh, on the door. So uh, why don't we go ahead and do initiative? Oh boy. Just to get an idea if everybody's going to kind of move around, or if we're unless we're all going to go in the same direction. Let's at least get an let's get an order of operations going here. It's the D. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. So. So it's going to be Rye, Cham, good, and then Davis, Wilson, and then uh, Captain's going to go last. All right. So she like, Captain kind of taps you on the, on the arm and uh, Davis and gestures you forward, you know, Hi. so. So what do you guys do? Do you guys walk straight ahead? How do you how do you move forward from junction C1? Well, I don't know, we should probably head up towards the bridge, which might be best to head to C2, that next junction, if that's got an elevator in it. I'm trying to look at the map. Map schematics. Yeah. yeah. Everybody make me an observation roll at minus two Ooh. because it is dark. Ooh. I don't like any of that. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. Craig, you gotta stop. Damn, <laughs> Damn man. <laughs> Gotta stop rolling them. I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> uh, I Wilson, succeeded. Right here. Right here. <laughs> Wilson and Cham, uh, off to your right, which looking at the map is this east side hallway. Uh, as you swing the lamps on your helmets over in that direction, uh, you see blood streaked down the walls and a lot of it and uh it's old and it's caked but it's it's red and it's shiny and uh cham i need a panic roll Shit. <laughs> oh where do i do that oh here it is okay, yeah go uh, oh sweet let's go to the chart all right i got that that's the uh you got that in front of you, Greg? I sure do. I know you like this chart. <laughs> I, I did. I really used to. <laughs> um, it, this says I rolled a nine. I drop an item, whether by stress, confusion, or the realization that you're all going to die anyway. You drop a weapon or other important item. The GM decides which one. Your okay, stress so level also increases <laughs> by one. Yeah. So you go ahead and take that stress. And let's get real specific right now because we need this in this moment like what is everybody what is everybody holding in their hands and i need you to enter it into the character sheet right there in roll 20. who took the bolt gun uh you know it's it's just sort of under the, the captain is is unwell and didn't give you specific orders as far as who was going to take what so so let's go ahead and lock this down bryce got the bolt gun I, I think I had the incinerator. Is that what I was given? Was the incinerator? Yeah, a harpoon gun. I, okay. Whatever yeah. you guys gave me, so. Probably I, think, I think the captain thrust the motion tractor, tracker into your hand, champ. So I would have the incinerator and the motion detector. Which one do you want me to drop? The motion detector. 
and when you drop because the the fire the incinerator is like a it has like a pack that's up on your back and it's attached to your compression suit and then there's kind of a thing and you're holding it and it's, it's kind of like a like it has like a strap you know so you're like wearing it but the motion detector is a thing that was in your hand that has that sort of half-ass arm strap that they have but it slips and it falls and it bangs loudly on the steel plating floor of this ghost ship hallway and you hear the sound of it it bounces down you know the hall in front of you down to c2 and also around this curved hallway you're facing and it just seems to like create this echo effect around the ship bang 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 and it was uh, he'll snap around and his eyes only find rise as they just go wide for a second as he kind of looks down at his hands I, I don't know. And Rise just Rise could have very gently, both hands, push Cam so back into the wall, so his back is into the wall. It Rise, not Cam can't see anything but Rise. Breath. <sighs> this ain't shit. All right, all right. <sighs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I don't know. I don't know. I you, uh... feeling sick, like like Captain. But can I? Is, do we have just suit to suit com? Yes. Can I? Okay. So just suit to suit com. You feeling sick? You got Captain's got? No, no, no. I'm just I'm fucking up. I'm. I gotta get my head straight. I'm sorry. I'm. It's all right. Hey. It's what we do, right? You and me. We got this. Let, all right, all right. Let the, let the suit take the motion tractor. You and me, we're going to go down to the engine room. We're going to see if we can power this puppy up. Maybe. Okay. Dip. Yeah, okay? yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. And that was blood on the wall. Did you see that? You know, who knows what happened, man? You, see, that could be rust. Who knows? That ain't rust. Don't, don't focus on that. Okay. All right. Focus on. We're getting this shit done. We get back on them. We get out of here, right? Yeah, it's a, I'm not sure this is a boat. We got seems a job. Like, seems we got like a, job. a coffin, right? We got a job to do, right? Yeah. Job always. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yes, yes, yes. All right, let's go. And then open up the uh, comm to to the captain. Cam and I, we're heading down to the uh, engine room to see if we can get this thing fired up. And turns it off and just kind of with one hand still on Cam's shoulder, so it's kind of guiding him down towards the end uh, to a lift to get to the engine room. Excellent. So let's start with Ryan Cham. So which way down the hall, which route do you take to start heading down to the engine room? You you drag your token and, and I will follow for good or for ill. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm looking at the map here, trying to figure it out. <laughs> so you walk straight ahead and you know that there's a junction and then to your right is all this blood on the wall. Uh, around over here that I'm pinging this bit here. Blood on the wall leading this way, straight ahead to a closed door and another junction this way, and then there's also off to your left. All right, I think we're just going to do the, the closed door. We're just going to go straight ahead, take the... Uh... It won't let me move my token for some reason, uh, but we're going to move straight ahead. We're avoiding the blood. Got it. All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, and then this is Chamber. There you go. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So you walk straight ahead. Uh, junction C2. Uh, the doors work. Uh, hit the button. Door opens up. And uh, you see a uh, staircase leading straight up and straight down. Just one, one single ladder 
going below deck to D and above deck to A and B. Would she have an idea of where the engine, where that type of engineering section might be? Sure. So uh, on, you're really headed uh, to the bridge. Uh, let's, let's double check that though, because on, uh, the only other thing I see is like the reactor and the reactor relay control. Everything else looks like it's on the bridge. Yeah. As you, as you, uh, you know, there's, there's overlays in your, uh, helmet, you know? Yep. And, uh. You know that mother is up on A, and on B, at the tech station, that's where you're going to get a diagnostic of uh, all the power systems on the ship. Then that's where they'll head. Yeah, tech station. Okay. All right, so... Uh, Davis. Yep. The the captain kind of taps you on the shoulder and goes, Where is the mother up on uh, which level is it on? It's on, it's on A. All right, I'm following you. I'm following you. Can we Go take ahead. you to Ma? Okay. Sure. And, uh, I'm going to go straight ahead. I'm going to climb up some stairs. You good for stairs? Yeah, I think I can do it. All Keep right. Let's go stairs. There we go. There we go. Up we go. So, uh, let's go back to C. So, uh, you all make it to C2 mm -hmm. and go up the stairs to B. Yep. And that puts you at junction B1. So, you turn around, you climb up these stairs, you turn around. The door opens, and you can see the bridge uh, in front of you, and it is completely dark. Let's get um, let's get checks from uh, what is it? Uh, non perception, the uh, equivalent observation. Perception. Observation. Let's get observation checks at a minus two from everybody, please. successes very nice <laughs> stress man no no it was a say don't worry it's a success it's not a stress no, he's okay. he's hyper, so stressed he's hyper alert yeah he's, he's got that he's <laughs> man can i have what he's on <laughs> All right, so the bridge is on battery reserve and is otherwise shut down. Only a faint standby illumination gives off an eerie orange glow as you start to move into the room. The blast shutters are still lowered and shut tight around the viewports and there is soot on the ceiling and several of the stations are just burned out. Um, there's a holographic display table in the middle of the room. Uh, and this is, this is like once state of the art hologram, hologram technology, but now it is just completely burnt out by a fire on the bridge and is damaged beyond repair. It looks like something big smashed into this thing and started a fire and it's just kind of cratered in the middle of the room. As you look over at the sensor station, it was also damaged by the fire, but it looks like uh, you could fix it. Um, pretty much everybody on the crew, with you know, you guys all kind of see that it's not it's not so far gone that it can't be fixed. And you look over at the pilot stations, and someone has taken an axe to station one, and it is sticking out. Uh, the handle of the axe is embedded in the console and looks otherwise untouched. 
Uh, Station 2, on the other hand, uh, looks like it's got some... Somebody tried to rip the keyboard and rip the interface out. Uh, but uh, Davis, you can tell that you could cannibalize the parts from one to the other and fix it to potentially pilot the ship. And then the captain sort of limps over to the command station. Uh, Someone will fly stairs too, Cap, if you want to see Mother. Hold on, hold on a second. Hang on. And she starts trying to scratch at the panel on one of the arms of the captain station. She's flipping it with her finger. She can't seem to get it done. And then she bangs it with her elbow. And it finally flips open. And a little slot shoots out of the arm. And you see a little glass panel. And it's shattered. And the captain goes, fuck. Fuck. And uh, looks at Wilson. And Wilson, you know that that's where the mother override key is you is usually stored for the captain's access um, in that drop down panel we gotta get go ahead if captain's in there already i'm gonna pull the axe out of station one and start cannibalizing it for parts gotta get this thing up and running at least up and limping Jam will help uh, either Davis or Rye, depending upon who needs, you know, if it's part tearing out of station one or the tech station, whatever, he'll just float. And this is a little bit above his pay grade at this point. <laughs> so the, the captain mutters something about getting the power back on. I got to turn the, gotta turn the power back on. We got to turn back on. I mutter something along the lines of no shit, Sherlock, and is working at the sensor station. So, uh, in order to, uh, in order to restore power, we're going to have to start with a heavy machinery roll for the uh, the control console and you guys can we can have as many as three people help each other with this so whoever is the highest heavy machinery go for it I'll assist I am I have a one in heavy machinery yeah Ryle will assist the cam just looks at the cam and goes it's you dude I'll make my um, job easier before we do that Travis hmm. is there any way that um, and I'll ask the group this uh, Jam would like to take 10 minutes to just try to calm down a little bit. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So if you take a round, you can remove one stress. So, so yeah. Do you guys just want to chill here for five or 10 minutes while you get yourselves together? Uh, you all recover one stress. Now, I, I will say, Travis, that this would probably put us in the air bracket that's what I was asking the group for because to take this Lisa 10 minutes is super chill right now. So she'll just be working during that 10 minutes of just pulling parts out of that station one, uh, tuck the axe in, maybe in her space belt. Okay. So as everybody starts to move around and starts to repair things, uh, uh, you hear uh, your motion detector gets a ping. And uh, I think you're still holding it in your in your hand, kind of as you move it. Uh, there you go, kind of as you move it around. And everybody can hear that. This thing's loud as hell. Captain, are your ears ringing or my ears ringing? Too? Oh no, that's the motion. Oh, that's this can't be right. Maybe it's a uh, ship cat. Maybe she's all... No, there's no oxygen here. 70 years and no oxygen, as freezing cold as it is, ship cat, really? Well, I, I thought maybe we left the, the umbilical open, but no. Then I remembered there was no oxygen, so no. Okay. Tesla likes to get into things, okay. 
Uh, Give it a good whack. I mean, it's probably broken. I mean, it, it did get dropped. I think it already had one good whack. Um, despite the assurances that it's just broken, Cham would pull the incinerator off his back and prime the the injector so there's a flame licking up in the darkness as he would point it towards wherever the motion's coming from. All right, so you point it towards, uh, you know, with your back to the the uh, the front of the bridge. You're looking down into the ship, and the ping continues for about thirty seconds. It's a good. Uh, it's it looks like it's coming from uh, far back near the mess hall, and almost just as soon as it was there, after about thirty seconds of pinging, it fades. And then it stops and is gone uh, almost as soon as it arrived. Maybe it was just something floating around. Stand down, Cam. We're good. 80, 70 years or something. You can't, shouldn't be, nothing right. should be walking around 70 years. Dead. You know how old this crap is. And and again, we're back on uh, one on one cam. Uh, com. It's like, like Waylon Yon T ever gives us the good stuff. I swear half our equipment's as old as this ship. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're good. Well, let's take let's take ten. Yeah, Sham's gonna definitely take ten before he rolls this heavy machinery roll. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I'll take I'll take thirty if everyone will <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> I got that kind of time, but right, right. Ten, ten is gonna have to do. With you. <laughs> right. Pulling up hurts. Okay, so after a an uneventful ten minutes, Travis, what do we? <laughs> <laughs> the ten, so you know, you see this ping, and uh, it goes away, and everybody sort of takes a second, and uh, then the lights come on, and you start to hear the hum of the ship start to wake up and computers start to turn themselves on and the light that tells the captain that mother wants to talk to the captain turns on and hold like the spark plug i just pulled out from the thing and i'm like i fix it yeah <laughs> bryce standing at the center station going i got ah, to fix it Oh, I think we fixed it. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, that's right. So the lights start to come back on, and the room starts to flicker. And uh, everybody, give me a fresh observation check. Oh boy. Um. Now that we can see things. Now that we can see things around. <laughs> I don't think I want to see things. <laughs> can I respectfully decline? <laughs> I don't want to do it. I got one success. I also got one success. See, you'll be fine. See, Greg, you're going <laughs> to... You don't see anything. It's fine. So, uh, Wilson, you're standing... You're standing near this sensor station. And you notice that sitting... It, it's it's dirty, and it's sooty, and it's gross, and there's like a like a duffel bag thrown over the console... And it's got some torn clothes, and it's got some, you know, it looks like, you know, maybe some cash. And then kind of tucked under like a, like a crumpled t-shirt, you see like a small fuzzy gray egg with like a little, like a little valve opening on one end of it. And... It's about the size of a chicken egg, and it just sort of ends in this little, ooh, little pooty, pouty nipple-like bit at the end. What is that? Ah, uh, can the egg gone horribly wrong? I don't know. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. Bold. And Rai's pointing the bolter at it already. 
just then a loud <sighs> starts to sound starts to sort of make the ship kind of tremble a little bit at first and then it and then it kind of recovers and then there's just sort of this loud you can you can even you can hear it through your suits it's a it's a loud hum coming from towards the back of the ship oh i walk over to piloting station that i've been working on okay, give me a contact roll just to start getting ship diagnostics here as everybody starts to wake up. Nope. Can I assist on that contact? Sure. They decide to push? Or do you want me to roll separate? Can, can you roll one? I don't know if you can roll 1d6 or if Davis. I can just roll 1d6. Uh, it's that. in the middle of your character sheet if you want to do it. Under the roll buttons, there is a 1d3, 1d6, 2d6, 3d6, and a d66. Uh, where? Oh, I, I got it. There we go. Uh, nope, didn't do any good. Nope. <laughs> so I guess that's. You're getting a, you're getting all sorts of diagnostic errors from oh. the air purification sector of the Cronus. Uh, it jumps out at you right away, and if uh, Cam and rye look over davis's shoulder that you see you notice this right away this this ship has been floating in space for 70 years it's uh air filters and the scrubbers uh below decks that clean the air are filthy and uh malfunctioning and it also means that the air on the ship you're seeing some more data telling you that uh the ship is breathable uh, the air on the ship is breathable, but it will be stale and heavy in carbon dioxide until the filters are either replaced or the central air scrubber shaft is clean. When you guys both know, the, the engineers both know that you have to go down there and clean it. You grab a... We're just towing the ship anyway. I say we just want it to be stale. Do, do what we got to do to get this thing tow-worthy. Let's get the hell off of this thing. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So this fuzzy egg thing with the valve on the end, is the valve obviously closed, obviously open, and the egg is empty somewhere in the middle? Like, what am I looking at here? It's not open by any means. Um, do you, uh, it's just sitting there sort of inert. It's, it's closed. It looks like... Um, it looks like it has like a little nipple on the end of it, you know? And uh, and the rest is just like a little gray fuzzy chicken egg. And uh, no, it doesn't look like empty or anything. It just looks like it's sitting there. But you've never seen anything like it. Is it in the duffel bag under this closer or is that all on top of the duffel bag? It's like It's like in it and under it. Someone was kind of throwing stuff into a bag and 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 there it is half in half out just took a second to spot it i'm getting a heavy original jurassic park feel from this entire scenario <laughs> <laughs> like, like a barbasol can somewhere i have and, no idea what this is but like it might be samples. it might be a sample that we're here to collect Jiggle it into the bag the rest of the way. We don't know if these samples are safe. Let, or you could just like leave it and let them deal with it when we get back if we're towing sure. this thing. We're towing it. They want samples? They got science people that can do samples. It's not our job. I I mean, I wouldn't know science if it hit me in the face. Eh. Can the entire I... time, I'm, I, Cham staring down towards where that sound and motion came from just for a point of reference, and he has not turned off the incinerator. Yeah. Can I attempt to grab the bag in such a way as to leave the egg sitting where it is? It's it's kind of in the bag. You want it to be out of the bag? Go big into the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I 
just pick it up it. you're wearing a space suit <laughs> what could happen just jiggle it in the bag and then zip the bag shut and we won't have to worry about it I mean everybody knows that suit is like armor <laughs> totally <laughs> I will leave the I egg. will attempt to put the egg all the way in the bag so I can zip the bag closed and take it with us. Okay. All right, give me a uh let's see, what can we what can we do here? We could harpoon Listen, the egg. As a player I know I as a player, <laughs> this is a terrible idea, but we don't know. Yeah, just give me a uh uh an agility check uh do you want uh mobility i want well, yeah mobility is that what did i say agility mobility well no i don't see i don't think that mo the mobility skill really applies here i think this is a base uh manipulation that's uh, like charismatic manipulation, yeah. isn't it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. I would like to convince the captain to put the egg in the bag and <laughs> the bag with my oh, manipulation. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Yeah, roll, roll manipulation and uh, and it'll be a real. I would like to plan. use one of my story points for an automatic success. <laughs> Douchebag. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how does this work? What do you what do you, you see? The captain like staring at monitors, looking around, checking out the air scrubber situation, <laughs> clearing her throat. How does how does what do you say, Captain? I think that this is a one of the specimens we're here to retrieve. You're obviously not up to doing a lot. Why don't you try and push the thing the rest of the way in this bag? and you can start taking it down to the med bay and get it stored. You can leave mother to me. I'm not leaving mother to you. Are you out of your mind? No, no. I talk to mother. That's my job. But I'll get your damn bag. What? I'm headed to the med bay anyway. Just give it to me. What? You're talking about this? Yes. All right. You know, the company can't even pick up a freaking duffel bag. She like limps over, throws this thing together, zips it up. Like, all right. And as she takes a breath to say what to do next, more lights are coming on, more of the ship continues to wake up. You notice a haze of vapor as warmer air begins to film the corridors. There's sort of a low uh, mist uh, coming in to, to the room. And uh, you hear Mother's voice for the first time uh, over, uh, this is Cronus's mother, by the way, the, the Cronus's mother system saying, Warning, cryo chambers deactivated. And then a monitor off to the side flickers to life and a crew manifest of the Cronus begins to read out. Start to see faces. Fuck. You start to see dossiers. You start to see backgrounds. You start to see that there are crew members here on the Cronus. That the ship is now waking up from cryo from cryo sleep. You see the names: uh, Co Doctor Cooper, Doctor Flynn, uh, Johns, Clayton, and uh, Wilson. You might recognize the name Clayton might ring a bell its name sounds familiar can Rye try to override this you can try yeah you want a comtech that's a comtech uh roll at minus two okay i'd like to push that So the mother tells you no, okay? And starts opening these things up. And you can see a, uh, a video feed. There's like uh, video monitors around the room. You know, the screen's everywhere. 
and uh, you manage to get all but two of the pods to keep from opening. It had already opened the first two. And once Ryan, they're open, people start waking up. Yeah, Raya is just uh, working this this uh, station. It's like you're not my mother. You can't tell me what to do. And then, so at least manages to get them shut down. Nice. Okay. So, uh, you're also getting, as you see, video feeds starting to wake up from around the ship. Um, Wilson, you definitely noticed the feeds coming from the science lab. Uh, there's been some damage. One of the science labs is entirely dark. Um, the med lab has uh, some damage as well. You can see that one of the med pods is is uh, very damaged and in a, in a, it's caked in what may or may not be organic material. And um, things are flickering to life, and those are excuse me, those are just the first two things that kind of jump out at you. And you see that Dr. Cooper and uh, company, uh, the company rep, uh, Clayton, are waking up from very slowly from hypersleep. Well, I think we should talk to the crew. All right. The captain's like, all right, sounds good. I'm going to med lab. See what's going on. You want to come with you, captain? Uh, if you if you think you're done here, remember everybody, like we got a fan out and uh, get this thing back online. We don't get to go back to the ship until we, I don't know what, recover these samples. Have uh, I finished the pilot thing? Just online. So, All we gotta do is tow this thing back, right? Uh, I think it's gonna take some rolls. This is a much larger ship. It's gonna take some, uh, some a Comtech roll to see what it's going to take to get the Cronus home, Here, because right. it is significantly larger than the Montero. You're really smart with ship stuff. Yeah, all right. I'm pretty much just pilot. I don't know computer stuff. You gonna help Can me I out help? With yeah, I'm helping. Okay. Okay. So let's let's uh, turn around. That's gonna take like a shift of work. Uh, oh. So it's gonna take like four hours to repair the uh, the pilot stations and oh. stabilize the ship and get this into some sort of uh, circumstance where it even can be towed without resisting you. Right. You want a Comtech roll, you said? Yes, please. All and right. Cham, I want... Cham, are you still looking down the hallway no. south? Hell yes. <laughs> so, uh, give me an observation roll with uh, no modifications, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good news is I succeed. The okay. bad news is I do so. Volcano so you're looking panics. down. <laughs> you're looking down. Well, you do not succeed. That uh, that botch on the stress dice cancels your success. But it doesn't shit. mean you don't observe something. Uh, so you're looking down the hall. You're you're kind of you're facing junction uh, B1. You're a little to the left of the door. And you kind of lean out. The lights are starting to come back on. The mist from the warm air is starting to come out of the vents as the temperature on the ship is starting to stabilize. And lights further down the hall are coming on. You see a junction in the distance. And then past that, across from a door, uh, right here in front of where it says this mess hall door is, um, is a human figure in a spacesuit, sitting on the floor, back against the wall, 
slouched against the ground. There is a shotgun at its feet. And as you kind of lean over to the left to get a look at this thing, you see uh, just blood all over the wall behind the head of this slouched figure down the hall. Um, I, I assume it's time for my panic roll. <laughs> and yeah, roll panic. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Good call. <laughs> Gosh. Seven. This is not, not helping me. Not helping my cause here, everybody. <laughs> I have a nervous twitch, which is funny because twitch is usually nervous. Uh, <laughs> my stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range of me increases by one. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Travis, if you will, my nervous twitch would react like this as he is at the ready. And as soon as he would see this, instead of like having a, a like a physical or a muscle fire in his neck, body, back, um, he's going to depress the trigger on the incinerator and just and like spray uh, just a quick burst of flame into the hallway. I think that should be enough to get everybody stressed <laughs> Nice. So everybody everyone. takes well done. So everyone takes one oh stress. Boy. Now I'm stressed. I was fine until that happened. No. I had calmed down. Now what I'm are you doing? Uh, Cam? Cam? Is the, is a, um, there's a body down here. Someone killed themselves uh, with a shotgun. What happens? Space sucks. <laughs> Cam. I mean, she's not wrong. wrong with you. <laughs> Cam, okay. 70 years stuck on this ship. Yeah, at some point, you're finally going to go hoo -hoo, and eat a barrel. He would switch over to the single comm with Rye. Who turned on the boat? It wasn't us. I don't know. It was a glitch. I, I don't know. I haven't had, even had a chance to get into this thing. Shit just keeps happening. He would look back Maybe down the hall. Trigger. Maybe it was a trigger or something. The, the pick, mother picked up life signs and turned everything back on. Who knows? Yeah. But you can tell now that when he's answering you, he doesn't believe it. As he just stands up and continues. He, and now the incinerator is held at the ready, like angled down the hall as my, my poor sweet baby's losing it. Do I have a way? Is there a way of mechanic? Isn't there a mechanic or a way for uh, Rye to try to calm her buddy down? Yes, a friend can. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I remember reading part of uh, somewhere in here where you can. You might have to double back and check me. Um, I don't know what you roll for that, but I believe a friend can reduce. One thing that can reduce stress is his personal item, which you can do one per act to reduce stress. So you could mess with your so, rosaries. Yeah, Ryle, Ryle start met by mentioning, hey, do you beat? Um, he would do so, but he would pull his uh, rosary out of an external pocket, He's taking a minute to manipulate the, the, the threaded beads with his sort of clumsy atmo fing covered fingers but instead of holding them and cycling through the beads he would instead take the beads and loop them around the guard and the handle of the incinerator so the cross dangles over his right hand and he just rubs the cross with his thumb i'm getting rid of that stress i'm using it right now yeah. very nice minus one stress and um, as he's doing that, you know, you're looking down the hall. You just fired off this flamethrower. Uh, the body's just sitting there. The flamethrower does does not have the distance, obviously, to reach this thing. So it's it's just sit, still sitting out there. I need uh, observation checks from everybody, please. Damn. I can't calm down. Because you're starting to hear some commotion in mm. the... <laughs> oh my god can i use the story point to um 
force for right of force cam to to de-stress to to chill the fuck out is that that's something i could do because i I'm, I'm looking i can't find a way how I, how it would work to to reduce that stress but uh, I'm I'm going to say that that is a very interesting notion that we will explore at a later time in this particular moment. No, because here's what's <laughs> yeah. about to happen. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Uh, another character can stop my panic, uh, uh, comes to my aid and makes a command roll. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. You can command yeah. somebody to calm down. That's right. Cool. Yes. All that's right. It. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay. This is where I'm going to spend the story point. This is where I'm going to spend the story point to auto succeed on that to get in Cam's face and tell them to chill the f- out. Cool. And you do keep him from panicking. Uh, oh wait, no, you got to make a you got to make a roll, right? Oh, I still got to even with. Oh the... no, no, you spend a story point. You spend yep. a story point, so it's guaranteed. Yep. Okay, so. Uh... So yeah, you get you get right up in his face. Now I want to be clear. Let's 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 talk about the physical uh, blocking of this. So, Cham Cam is facing down the hallway at this mysterious slouched figure. You have now walked around to get in his face with your back to this thing to calm him down and keep him from panicking. Uh, in this moment, uh, Wilson, something catches your eye on the security cameras in the um, in the now I want to make sure you're all just going to have to hold on a second I got to make sure where the cryo tubes are on the ship let's just let's just hold on just a second here are... we got to find the actual location of the cryo tubes on the Cronus I saw the earlier I'm pretty sure they were down in C when we first got on to C deck yeah I think yeah C deck D deck. There's cryo. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So you're seeing that only two people woke up from cryo, right? And this is Wilson I'm talking to right now. You notice this. And you can see uh, this this older gentleman is having a conversation with a younger lady, uh, a younger woman. Uh, you s- starting to kind of recognize uh, her uh, posters, you've uh, not posters, but like uh, transmissions, emails. You know, uh, sorry, this person is no longer with the company. Um, it was always kind of shady. Uh, what specifically happened to uh, this person whose name is a thing? Clayton. Starting to kind of come back to you who this is, and uh, she's having a heated conversation with this older gentleman who is one of the doctors dr cooper and he's rubbing his head like he's got a headache and they seem to be talking and they seem to be starting to have a heated argument uh but the audio feed to the room is not up yet and you're just kind of noticing this out of the corner of your eye It appears that the crew are unhappy. We might want to get involved. And uh, and Davis, you, you hear that. All right, so it's you and I go down there, calm them down. It's okay, it's been 70. Maybe we shouldn't lead off with it's been 70. Maybe we should just be like, good morning. What happened here? I don't know, Miss Davis. I will leave it in your very capable hands. All right, uh, Wilson, can I call you Wilson? Yes, it is my last name. You can call me Wilson. Excellent. I just, you know, instead of Mr. Wilson, it just seems so formal. Um, So yeah, Wilson, let's go down there and let's talk to these people. Um, Oh no, you misunderstood me. I would like you to go down there and talk to these people. Oh, Captain, you want to come down and uh, talk to the fancy people with me? Yeah, we gotta we gotta make sure they're okay and decide yeah. whether we want to make everybody else up. That's fine. We can head down there. All right, come on, Captain, let's go. All right, so they start to make their way, and Wilson, you're gonna you're gonna stay behind. 
Uh, yes, I'm going to wait until everyone else has moved on before I do anything else, and I will be right back IRL. Cool. So let's move. Uh, the captain makes her way toward Junction B1 and, like, walks right by Cham. Like, doesn't even notice this, you know, scene happening uh -huh. right next to her. And uh, proceeds to go down the stairs. Uh, Cham and Rai, you guys are having your moment, okay? You guys are having this sort of come to Jesus, get your shit together moment together. And you're moving your rosaries and you're trying to keep from freaking out. And in that, within that time, uh, the captain and Davis make their way to Sea Deck. Uh, I'd like to move them a little bit down the hall. And then, uh, Wilson, as you continue to watch the video feed, you see Dr. Cooper has now put both of his thumbs under his eye, under his upper eyelids like this. And just is like shaking his head and is loudly protesting whatever it is he's talking to Clayton about. She has turned and is attempting to open the door, which she is having a hard time opening. Uh, Greg, can we move? Can we move the captain and ride down to sea deck? Captain we sure can. Davis, sorry, Captain and Davis down to see that. Uh, Cham, there is no, uh, there is no check needed to notice as you're moving these beads and you're trying to relax, you're trying to calm down. Rai kind of shifts her weight, moves to the side, and you see down past the shoulder uh, that guy who was sitting on the ground. Uh, he is standing up. Wait, what? Huh? The, he is the, standing up. He's got one arm on the wall. The dude a, that shot himself in the head? A big hot mess of matter falls out of a sort of a cavity in the top of his head. Blah, splats on the ground. And then he like an old, like a, like a drunk guy, you know, leaving the bar. He starts to shumble. He starts to shamble down the hallway in your direction. Well, well I, Kat just noped out. So we'll be right back. We're going to try to, we're going to, we're going to wait for the cameras to reset. We'll be right back, everybody. Uh, oh, wait, she, she's back. She's like, back. Give us one second. We'll reset the cameras, everyone. Hold on one sec for us. <laughs> Sorry, I, got, I, got, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take like a nitro pill too. Hold on. We're back, everybody, for good or for ill. Yeah. This thing stands up. Bunch of goo falls out of its head. It's a long distance away from you. It's about a full hallway and a half down, and there's still kind of a low mist. And even though the lights are back on, it's you can't, you know, it's tough to see this thing. But it's up, and it is slowly making its way in your direction. Did did it did 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 it pick up the shot? Did it pick up the shotgun? Is this thing armed? It has stepped right over the shotgun and is heading your way. Do we both do this? Sorry, I missed some stuff. No, you're facing yeah. Cham right now, and you see this look come over his face. You know what is what does Cham's face look like as he sees this? <laughs> he would. Palm the top of Rai's helmet, 
like a basketball and turn her around at the same time putting his shoulder in front of her shoulder to put himself between this thing and her and i think at that point seeing that look on cam's face they've they've been at this together long enough shit's going down and the bolter is swinging around as she is to come into ready position to fire the bolt gun is Excellent. Uh, uh, go ahead and do me a favor and double back and check the range on the bolt gun. Uh, it is short range. It is short. So you know you've got, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bolt gun. This thing is currently at long uh, range right now. It is down the hall and it's slowly heading your direction. So, so we will cut quickly over to, uh, as the two of you see this thing and, you know, we get that killer you know, Dolly push in. If you guys seeing this, uh, this weird shape moving down the hallway, let's cut down to C deck. And uh, Wilson, you can watch this happening on the monitors. You see the captain and Davis making their way down to uh, C deck. You uh, see, I would have, uh, I would have, talked to the captain as soon as I saw the dude grab his eyelids and would have like explained the, as best I can how their their discussion seems to be going. What and she's like she's like what he's got a headache? What? Probably. I'm not sure. He he literally grabbed his eyelids and shook his head and uh the other person, the woman is not happy with him. See if they're puking by the time we get down there, because you know maybe they got fat. I mean, they've been hypersleep a very long time, so uh, you know maybe they're just not feeling good. We could take them up to the med bay, get checked out. <sighs> sure, it's good. You know, I know first aid, so it's fine. Uh... All right, I'm looking at C. Why don't I see any, them? any cryopods on the on that ship at all? I've been looking this whole time. I thought we just found them. Okay. Oh man. Okay. Well, let me let me just let me just tell you because because there <laughs> there is a living area near the med lab. We wanted to go that way. But... Well, we're gonna put them there. That's where they are now. All right. The living area. All right. Yeah. And that's on C. It's on B. I don't see anything that's not cargo or cooling on C well, We got thrown off. Oh, cryo's on A. Sorry. Oh, cryo's on A? Yeah. Oh, it is. I oh, yeah. There it is. We'll go up the stairs. All right. So we go up instead. Let's just have a little rewind. Our heroes are up on A, and they have cleared the corner of the stairwell. Mm -hmm. uh, Wilson, what do you tell... What do you tell what do you tell the captain? You open comps to the captain. What do you tell her? Well, that's, I was telling her that the people are, their discussion seems to be going poorly and that the one person is not feeling well or being interrogated. It's hard to tell. She's like, okay. And as soon as she finishes that sentence, Dr. Cooper begins to scream. And he screams so loud that you can hear? almost hear it, uh, Cham and... Right. You can certainly hear it through the co open comms of Davis. I'm going to grab the captain and start running towards it. I just realized something, not to be a jerk, because this is stressful enough, but we probably should have rolled for air at least once by now. Uh, yes, let's all roll for air. Thank you. So what you do is you roll uh, your current air score. So you're going to roll 5d6. Oh, no. So Rye loses two air, Wilson loses one, and Davis loses one. I got all my air! <laughs> <laughs> Somehow! So you hold your breath instead of hyperventilating when you're stressed. That makes and Rye's been yelling at you. <laughs> right, right, that's it! <laughs> Alright, so they're in cryo one. The door has been uh, sealed shut and uh, 
it, as in to say that it has been locked from the outside on the terminal and it is going to take a contact roll oh, right. to get this door open. Cool. And you hear bloody murder screaming from the other side of the door and you hear um, uh, Clayton beating her fists on the door screaming to you to let her out and Wilson you can see all this on the monitor blood is beginning blood is beginning to to seep out of Cooper's nose and ears uh yes you get a plus one to your Comtech roll to open this door good excellent you managed to manually bypass it without any other gear because you know just what you are doing. And this is an older design uh, ship to what you're used to. And uh, the door goes whoosh, and opens. And um, and Clayton falls out, just spills out and flips oh, over look. and starts to backpedal. Is everything all right? What's, what's, what's happening here? She's like, no, it's not fucking all right. Oh, okay. And you guys look into the med lab and you see this older gentleman. He's got one hand on the end of his cryopod. It's slipping with his sweat and the blood that's starting that he smeared around his face because his eyes and his ears and his nose are bleeding. And his bloody eyes roll over white as the scientist convulses and writhes against the side of the pod. Is this like a rare side effect of cryosleep that I've just not really encountered much. Um, uh, uh, Clayton doesn't even hear you. She just continues to like scoot backwards. No, I'm over. asking you. The oh, you, me? That's some weird, like, is this a normal thing? Is this like some, like, you know, like when you read the side effects thing, it's like side effects may include, da, 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 like, are these on the list? Are any of these on the list of cryo sleep side effects? Uh, headaches can result from extended years in cryo sleep. He okay. has been asleep for seventy years, but you're really not supposed to bleed profusely from. Okay, your so I'm like, uh, all right. Just wanted to know what level of upset I should be. It's real, like, real upset. Like nosebleeds was a good thing, you know. I just okay, real, real upset. Cool. I pull out. I like hesitate for a moment between the harpoon gun and the axe. I go for the harpoon. All right, so you got your harpoon gun. Yeah. The captain rallies. The captain <sighs> is like, oh, my God, and bursts into the room and it throws her hands on Dr. Cooper's shoulders in an attempt to pin him down. He's now convulsing. He's screaming bloody murder. Maybe we should just put him out of his misery. No, like, he's just, he looks real bad. He looks real poorly, Captain. The captain is shouting, it's going to be okay. Hold on tight. Okay, we got to get him to the med lab. She's so screaming. The med lab is one deck down. And then all of a sudden, with a sickening pop and a bloody splash, <laughs> sprays all over your viewfinder. His eyeball launches from his face and mashes square against your helmet, Davis, and kind of oh. sticks there uh, before giving and falling onto the floor. It rolls under one of the cryo tubes. You pause trying to process exactly what you are seeing. A slender, gore covered arm pushes its way out of Cooper's empty eye socket, reaches around, and tugs at his distended mouth as spindly white fingers yank his teeth back. Cooper does not scream. It's clear that he isn't in his own head anymore. Something else is and it wants out. Flesh tears and tendons snap as the thing inside his splintering skull pulls his face open right at the jawline. Headshot. Oh, but let me finish reading for just oh, a second. Okay. Finally, a thick gurgling sound wells up inside Cooper as his head is ripped from his body, his neck gushing at whatever was in, as whatever was inside of him plops to the floor in a burst of blood. Kill it! Kill it now! Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what's her name? I didn't remember this lady's name. Clayton yells. Clayton. Uh, <clears throat> you okay. see 
uh, yes. a translucent white thing on the floor slow off its placenta, struggling to stand on four wobbly fawn-light legs, shaking brain matter from its spiky hide. The little thing turns its bulbous, eyeless head toward you and crouches. Oh, I, I've shot it six times by now, Travis. Come okay, on. well, when well, it's all happened so fast. Now you get to attack it. No, there was no time for an eyeball to slide down my face. <laughs> <There's> no time. <laughs> I will I will say that um, you totally have the aim bonus. Uh, absolutely. Excellent. I will give you I that. I will so take that's a that. Plus one. All right. I have a harpoon gun. Uh, not on my sheet. Uh, do I just roll ranged combat? Yes. Cool. Plus one. Is the aim. One success. And it's a damage one as well. Mm -hmm. Armor doubled, single shot. Yes. So you do, what's the damage? It's the damage is one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. All right. So you put a bolt through this thing's flank, and it spins like a top, and it recovers. Well, now the thing points. is with the harpoon gun. Uh huh. It's attached now, and I could reel it in. To, to the... you. <laughs> it's attached <laughs> to you. Have an axe. <laughs> I can smash it. <laughs> well, I think you really. I don't know. All right. Leah used to do a lot of catfish fishing. Are <laughs> you reel it in and it's... Yeah. <laughs> I thought you just stuck your arm in their mouth and pulled them up. Well, that's noodling. That's a different yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Travis is looking at you like who caught who <laughs> in this no, scenario. I'm to, I'm looking at this thing's options. Uh, so yeah, so you did one, and it's harpooned to the gun that you're holding. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's. I'm going to give that as your sneak attack to this thing. Okay. as you had this uh, opportunity to attack it. So let's get a round of initiative going here. Okay. <laughs> I'm full of so many bad ideas right now. And the captain needs to roll it too. Yeah. Come on, captain, help me out. Uh, uh... Well, at least it's on a leash right now. That's, that's the important thing, is it's not going to go skittering off into the air vents or something. It's on a leash. Okay, so we've got the same roll, so uh, you'll go ahead of me. Okay. Okay. So, uh, also, Cham and uh, and Rai give me fresh initiatives as well. I, 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 I politely request no. I would like not <laughs> like to do this. You can't panic on an initiative roll. You're just rolling. Yeah, Cham can't. Greg surely can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, Wilson. You're up in the uh, bridge there. Uh huh. This guy's head just exploded, and a little white creature fell out of it, and uh, Davis harpooned it. Um. Well, I I stare horrified for a moment before my back into gear and I realized that I had plans because I we need to learn more about what's going on and so I perhaps foolishly head up to a deck because that's also where mother is excellent Wilson moves toward a deck meanwhile uh, cam and Rye are staring down this thing it's getting closer it's made it slowly 
a good uh, 15 or 20 feet. You know, once it finally got some momentum and found its feet, it started chugging along at you pretty close. It's now at medium range. You can tell that it did attempt to blow its own head off and mostly succeeded. It is, its head is so bloated and misshapen and unrecognizable from a human head. It has now left the confines of the helmet in this spacesuit that it was wearing, and it looks like a giant malformed uh, blood monster sh shambling towards you. And it's red matter is falling out of its uh, this hole in its head and out of its mouth and in wounds on its hands and on its legs. And it is shambling your way. On the count uh, of three. Yeah? Run. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Jam's definitely thinking about running since no one's around anymore. The captain, the pilot, and the corporate agent have all disappeared. So the eyes that you see are the eyes that are flicking towards the elevator shaft and the uh, ladder that you all ascended to get here. Is it between us and, and there yet? Let's look at the map here. You guys are on C. No, you're not. What level are you on? You're on B. Yeah, we're on B. B. On uh, so I'm going to... Uh, let's see. You're on the bridge? Well, yeah, we were, still, we were still up here. We didn't leave up here. Right. Yeah, yeah. I just don't see your tokens. I thought you were over... Uh, no, mine's right here. Oh, there's you. You guys are like right here. Oh, there's Cham. Uh -huh. And then Cham is like right here. Right. And this monster is now at the junction uh, here that you're seeing. It had moved from that door in front of the mess hall here and has now made it to here and is shambling your direction. And it is, uh, first it is uh, Cham's turn and then Rye. I, I rise higher. Is that better? Uh, no. Lower numbers go first. Is my understanding. Oh shit. Okay. Um. Uh. So the eyes that would look at Rye ask a question. Is this is an old song? Do we stay or do we go? And that's he just he needs the answer to whether they're staying or they're going. What you see is burn and run. Turn and burn. Then he would take a step forward and open up the incinerator and just blast it down the hall. I mean, he is, there is, he's not trying to be surgical about this. This is, he is lighting this place up in this area. Nice. And its range is medium. Go ahead and give me a ranged weapons roll. I'm going to use a story point here. Yeah, buddy. I'm not taking chances with any of that shit. <laughs> We're going to... I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. yeah, he's... <laughs> I'm nervous. I feel bad. So yeah, he just he just steps forward, and as soon as Rye gives him the go ahead, he just opens the valve fully, like pulls back the lever on the top of it, touches the rosary around the the trigger and handle mechanism, depresses the trigger, and just absolutely blasts this area. Beautiful, and the damage is two. Uh, and so yeah, you just like light this thing totally on fire. There's flames flying down the hallway. It doesn't scream, but seems to bellow in a long, low, gaseous moan as it starts to cook. Rye, what do you do? 
Um, so using fast and slow actions, Rai is going to uh, shove Cam towards the uh, ladder to get them, to get him moving so that we can get the fuck out of here. Uh, and then take a step forward to hopefully move into short range, uh, fire a bolt into this burning thing, and then follow Cam. All right, so you're going to shoot at it as it closes the distance and then go? Yep. All right, so that is a slow action of shooting and then a fast action of running. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and give me a ranged, because this thing still moves even though it's on fire, and uh, and now it's closing in on shorter range. So you can, well, actually, actually, it doesn't, it's slow moving, so it doesn't cover that much distance. So let's go ahead and use some rules here. So you are firing a short ranged weapon into a medium range target. So you are going to have a minus one to your base dice to hit. Uh, this creature coming towards you. Okay, and I'm not helped by the fact that it's on fire, so... No. Okay. <sighs> Easier to see. Uh, that is a success. Six, uh, successes on stress dice count, so... Yep. So, yeah. You okay. put, a, put a bolt right through this thing's face, and it spins on its heel, because this is a slug. This is a projectile. Thump! And it plugs it somewhere in its immolated bulbous head and it spins on its on its heels and tries to grip the wall and just kind of tips over its own top heavy weight and you know almost comically almost uh, uh, falls on its ass and rolls a little bit further away down the hall before it can recover uh, can she also be screaming into her comm? We gotta get this shit fuck out of here! And uh, just as you do that, uh, let's go to the... Uh, first of all, Wilson, you hear that over your comms, okay? Now, Wilson was able to, without even having to sneak, he just kind of walked right by this scene. And Wilson, you saw this scene to your left as you went to the ladder at Junction B1. Uh, you see him, you see Cham looking down the hall, you see them freaking out, and then as you start to climb, you hear flamethrowers erupt, and the shit's jumping off below you, and then you hear Rai scream into the comm. As you make your way to Mother up on a deck, you can see uh, down that hallway coming out of the stairs, uh, the small room with the little lights flickering all over, and uh, you start to head that direction. But before we have that moment, let's go back down to the cryo tubes and yeah. uh, this thing is mad as hell yeah. and uh, is going to uh, get to go oh, because man. Me. Oops. yeah and before the captain too because the captain great uh, didn't let me double check that here yeah okay so let's go to this thing well, thankfully, Captain's the closest person to it. Oh, I'm not rolling a goddamn thing. Uh, it jumps on the captain's face. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. Um, because the captain was closer to it, having been, uh, you know, he's on, on her space helmet. Or did she? Was she stupid and took it off? On on her on her space helmet. Okay. This thing has jumped and is clawing and its little talons are finding some purchase on the glass of oh. the captain's helmet. And it is screaming bloody murder with this little harpoon kind of wiggling out of its upper thigh mm -hmm. uh, as it scratches at the captain, who has now fallen on her back and is screaming and yelling as this thing claws at her face. Okay. It's your turn. I want to... Hit, flick the switch on the harpoon gun and drop it. Have my axe ready so as it like retracts in like a tape measure. I'm gonna I'm gonna axe the real the real in whatever this thing is. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna use one of my uh, story points to automatically hit this thing with the axe. So to see two things happening here, you're trying to pull this thing off of her face yes. with the harpoon gun. Being reeled in. 
and you're going to attempt to chop this thing with an axe. Now, I will give you the reeling in as a fast action on the harpoon gun, okay? Sure. But you're still going to have to roll for it. And if it works, you've got the room to axe this thing without putting an axe through the captain's sure. face. Can we roll that ranged combat from the harpoon gun to reel yes, it in? Yes, please. You have to operate the harpoon gun to reel it in, hopefully get it off the captain. Ah ha ha ha. Not only did you not do it, but oh. the harpoon pulls okay, right what? out. I'm going a, I'm to a push it. You cannot push I cannot a push. botched. I will let you use your story point but you cannot push a botched roll. I did not know that. Okay. So you, if you have like one success, you can push it? Or if it's if it's just if you hit the... Um... Even if you got no successes, you could push it, but if you got a botch on your botch. stress dice, you cannot cool. push. Good to know, good to know. Okay. Um, I'm going to use both my story points. You know what? Sure. I'm going to use I'm gonna use my story point and just succeed at reeling it in and axing it. Just going to... Wow. Both of them. Okay. You, uh, you cut out a little bit. Uh, my internet's messing up. Tell me one more time. I'm going to use both my story points to reel it in and to ax it. I will. I will allow you to do that. Roll, uh, uh, so you reel it in. I'm going to. I'm going to give that one to you, and then you ax this thing. What's the damage on a hand axe? I wonder. There's no axe in the thing. Um, a I'm going to give it. At least one, obviously. A knife does two. A a like a, a low blow torch does three. I'd like to think it does more than a knife, but that's up to you. Okay. Well, all right. So here's what happens. You hit the button. Zzz, the 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 cord goes taut on this little bastard. It pulls the leg out from under it, and it scrapes its talons against the glass of the captain's helmet as it's pulled towards you. You're able to drop it. And in a quick grab of the axe with your left hand, uh, you're able to kill this thing. How does how does this look? Uh, what, what, uh, tell oh me how you want to do this. Um, I see. So the captain's, you know, I've got the screaming woman behind me. The guy's missing his head. I've got the eyeball. I imagine like it like to kind of like it got stuck on something. Like it didn't quite fall to the floor. So it's just dangling off me right now. Um, so I'm like, don't worry, captain. I got this. And I just hit the switch to reel it in, like taking the safety off the tape measure. I drop the harpoon gun and I pull out the ax and like splitting logs back home, just <laughs> right, right, whatever this thing is. If it's reeled in, perfect time, like catfish noodling. <laughs> I love it. And in that moment, <gasps> we cut up to mother, the, the, the din of massacring this little bastard that just jumped out of this guy's head and davis's moment of triumph cut right to the peaceful cool comfort of mother's chamber up on a deck as wilson walks through the threshold wilson what are you doing in there uh well i would imagine to get any information i would have to use my access card that is my signature item so I insert my access card to converse with Mother. Very nice. Mother greets you and immediately begins spilling information on the Cronus. Uh, informa uh, all the data on what happened uh, begins to be uh, rattled off in all caps green text. The Cronus was acting on classified data from an encrypted transmission when it launched in 2110 in an attempt to locate samples of the chemical agent AO395X.91-15. This led it to a place in the Draconis system onto a small planetoid dubbed LV-113 tucked away on the planetary debris belt and a mysterious chemical was discovered there, but some of it had been previously deployed, causing mutations in the planet's life forms. When the science team modified and experimented with what they called the 2-6 Draconis strain, and you see images on mother of this black liquid petri dishes and sweating on the outside of oddly shaped tall urns, 
Members of the crew became infected with what mother describes as moat pathogen spores, causing them to give birth to monsters, monsters which quickly matured and burst out of their heads. Chaos soon broke out. There was a mutiny. The science module on the Cronus was ejected and left behind, and the surviving crew escaped the planetoid. And as you're learning this and you're reading this and this background on the Cronus and its mysterious cargo starts to unfold in front of you, everyone on the crew of the Montero, Cham and Rai as they escape this creature, Davis and the captain as they collect themselves after killing whatever the heck this was that just jumped out of Dr. Cooper's head. And Wilson up in mother's chamber. You all get a call from the Montero. Self-destruct sequence initiated. What? You have 10, second, uh, 10 minutes to reach minimum safe distance. No, Repeat. My Full self-destruct sequence initiated. You have 10 minutes to reach minimum safe distance. Wilson, I want to get a quick reaction out of you. Okay. Uh, about anything specific? Well, the, the Montero has now hooked itself up to explode. So we're going to go around the room one time. How does everyone react to Mother, the Mother 3000 from the Montero telling all five of you that it is about to explode? Um. Ah, jeez, I don't know. <laughs> He'd probably immediately get on the comms to the rest of the crew, like self-destruct. Who and can she do that? He says out loud with no one listening. Rai, Cham, how about you? Motherfucker. Can we get there in time? She says out loud. Yes. <laughs> okay. Would Cham know if they could get there? there it, this is Greg. This is... Tur, turning, <laughs> no. tur, turning off the self-destruct. They can't do that. They don't have the access codes for that, right? No. No. He looks at her like, well, he's going to say it. Who turned on this boat? Who killed our boat? What the fuck was that? Meanwhile, the captain lays on her back, hyperventilating. And Davis, blood all over her spacesuit, axe in hand, having now chopped down this little bastard like a piece of wood. Uh... What's this? What's the expression on her face? I go through like victorious and like yeah, like that was awesome. Like that was some action movie kind of shit. And then to like my baby, no, the sh no, 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 not the ship, no, no. Oh, I'm like I could get there in time. I ran now. I could get there in time. Captain, Captain, stop, stop breathing and tell me, can you override the the self destruct? Captain, can you override the self destruct? <laughs> The captain panics and passes out, and Mother once again reminds you that the self-destruct sequence has been activated, and you have nine minutes to reach minimum safe distance. And with that, we will end our game for the evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And if any of you decide to scream, remember, you're in space. No one can hear you. Thank you. Definitely not our passed out captain. It's going to be like, I should have let it eat her. Oh, that was fantastic. Oh, I love that. That was so much fun. Oh, this system is so unforgiving. Yeah, yeah it's really cool. Oh, I love it. Oh, amazing, Travis. Oh, I loved it. It was so good, my friend. Uh, let's go in reverse order and start with Travis. Travis, how are you doing? How did you like it? Talk to us about it. Fantastic I'm job, good. buddy. 
I'm good. I love this. I'm obviously I'm going through a big alien phase. I, you know, Lindy will tell you I won't shut the hell up about aliens. I'm loving this system. I'm really enjoying the quick start guide. I can't wait for the full book to come out in December because I'm already scratching, making notes. I want to blow out that panic table. There's a lot of like uh, tables and odds and ends that I just really want to blow out in this game because I think there's a lot of potential for some really intense uh uh, horror gaming going on with the alien thing and it doesn't have to be about the xenomorph every time and that's something that I'm really enjoying about uh, what they what uh, Free League has put out here because we're really exploring like themes from Covenant and themes from Prometheus and and so I'm having a great time. I want to say that I really appreciate uh, Greg for the opportunity to run this game uh, on his channel. I'm a huge fan of uh, Tales from the Grim. I like how the things are done around here and uh, I'm I'm just really humbled and, and I feel very lucky to get to have run a game here on uh, Frightful Fridays. It's badass. Uh, and so I, this went great. I can't wait to do it again and find out whether everyone dies. Uh, I'm at Producer Trav. I'm the producer for WebDM. Uh, we're going to talk about cooking monsters next week uh, for 44 minutes, if that's conceivable. Uh, so I just think all these people are amazing and I can't wait to do the second chapter of this. Uh, thank you so much for having me. My favorite part. Uh, was uh, Greg and Rai's relation, uh, uh, Cham and Rai's relationship, and 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 I'm not done, Greg. And taking a minute to like have some good character stuff in the beginning, where it's kind of a slow cooker, and we're gonna let these people kind of talk to one another. And you know, it doesn't have to be like slam bang, like the most electrifying moment that you've ever had. Like it's, it's you're you're we're, we're learning about these people and about their relationships before we murder them. So I'm really loving that. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Fantastic, buddy. And uh, down to the axe-wielding maniac that is also the pilot of the Montero. And my good buddy, Lindy. Lindy, how are you doing? Uh, wow. You just go. <laughs> I was better before the ship put on the self-destruct sequence. Um, I was pretty sure that was not going to go as well as it did. But, you know, but good points are for him. I really wanted to, that's the reason I chose the harpoon again. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I wonder if I could just pull something towards me and then hit it. And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. I would, I'm not going to try that with anything bigger than that, though. So there's your one alien noodle of the campaign. Um, that was super duper fun. Uh, it's always a pleasure when Travis DMs whenever I can play with Mal and Kat and Greg. So I can't wait for more spoops and terror. Uh, you can find me online at Laugh Love Lindy on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. We are on a weeks hiatus on my channel because <laughs> I'm moving if you hadn't noticed um, we'll be back full force at the end of the month uh, with some super fun stuff and the start of season two of our Mondays in Alexandria campaign so keep your eyes peeled fantastic stuff my friend and everybody remember that uh, we've got the alien show over on uh, Lindy's channel uh, when they come back which is fantastic because it's got the Blade Runner hybrid shit that I'm totally down with super jealous when I turn into that one got the single prince tear coming down whenever I see people playing it and let's go over to my buddy that talked me off the ledge on three separate occasions and burned a story point to keep my ass from killing everybody before mother could. Kat, how are you doing? And uh, what'd you think? Um, my heart rate is down somewhere around two times it's normal right now. Uh, from about three times normal, my blood pressure is through the roof and uh yeah so that happened um you know one of the things i, when I realized that you know cam and rye were going to be that we were going to be doing cam and rye it was like yeah these guys they've been together a long time they've seen it all um and it's if one goes we both go it's, she's not about to let cam uh she's not about to let cam freak out on her and she's not about to let Cam do this on his own. She's right there with him every step of the way. Um, Travis, thank you. Wow. I, you know, I'm not a horror person. I don't watch horror movies. I don't like horror movies. I don't like Stephen. I, I mean, I like Stephen King, but I don't read a bunch of, I don't do horror, but wow. Getting the chance to play. Yeah, this is, this is, this is the shit. 
I love it. Thank you so much, Greg, for inviting me. Thank you so much, Travis, for running this. Anytime I get to sit down with Mal and Lindy and play, it's just the best. Katie, I wish you could have been here. Miss you, love. Um, people watching on YouTube, you got to check these things out live. And Friday night, Friday night, Fright Night. Yeah. Let's do it. Fantastic, fantastic, my friend. As we go up to the corporate agent, who I swear to you is he is working this system and scares me more than the thing that was shambling down the hall because there's a fucking agenda that I am not privy to that's really like he's not worried about mother blowing. I you know, whatever. Mal, how are you doing, buddy? And what'd you think? I, I'm totally worried. If the ship blows up, I'm fucked. <laughs> uh, I'm doing great. This is great. I love, I love horror. Anything getting to play in it is even better, especially because I've gotten to play in some great horror games this summer. <clears throat> um, yeah, like Pope says, I'm the best at betrayal. Apparently, <laughs> um, I just yeah, you know, we have, we have things to do we have to get the specimens and take the boat home and crew is technically expendable it's the last thing on the list of important things and uh you know i don't want anyone to die but if you need someone to drive the ship home right i need someone to drive the ship home and i don't want anyone to die i i've been on the ship for a little while but also if you die so that I can succeed in my things I need to get done, it's just business. It's not personal. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at Maladale. I'm uh, gonna do something with Tommy on Sunday because we've got a week off from our things from the flood game. I always have fun coming here with Travis and Lindy and all of you and getting to play with Greg and Kat again is always a good time. Uh, I think that's kind of it. <laughs> That was amazing. Look, if I murder you in the process of doing my job, that's just how the cookie crumbles. You can find me on Twitter at Mal and, uh <laughs> Listen, if they, if they die and I have Ice nothing cold. to do with it, it's cold not blooded. my fault. Yeah, it's cold-blooded. <laughs> I mean, holy hell, dude. Yeah, you went right in. You, you, that was... that. I don't know if you've ever said that on stream, but that was part of your spiel. It, just like just like Travis said, it was like your canned outro, you know. Well, if the rest of the players die, <laughs> it's just like you said it a million times. Oh, buddy, oh boy, what a what a thing here. Uh, anyway, for me, I love this system. Uh, Travis did a fantastic job setting everything up. The hard cuts at the end to each group as they were in equally precarious positions, um, with just. In the, I mean, perfectly timed self-destruct sequence going on, minimum safe distance. I got chills back, you know, like, where's Lance Hendrickson? Is he coming to get us? Um, I mean, it's just great, great stuff. I absolutely had such a blast. Um, got to get Katie back here so we can have our Friday night fight crew at full force to be able to take on these horrible villains and aliens. Anyway, Grimjack21502 on the Twitter, part of the Tales from the Grim team here on the Twitch. Coming up on Sunday, we have our 1950s sci-fi thriller, uh, uh, Sky Chasers, coming at you at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then on Monday night at 9 p.m., we have our Modifius 2D20 Star Trek system, the continuing mission where our group has just gone into the Shackleton Expanse. And this week, because of donor donations last week, we will have not only Khan, but Q. And so show up for that fun, but please follow on Twitter, follow here. If you're on YouTube, look down at the links in the doobly-doo and follow all of these lovely people and catch us coming live and watch, wait for the continuation of this tale. It is a doozy, everybody. But uh, that's about it right now. I see, are we going to, I don't think anybody's doing anything right now. We have critical roles on, but F them, they don't need us. <laughs> Um, as the campfire goes down, there's only one thing left to say. You can't always roll nat 20s, especially not in this game, but you can always role play with all of your friends. We'll see you next time on Friday Night Fights.